Hello everyone and welcome to a Rocket Lasso Live, episode 16 of season 2. We've already got a bunch of people hanging out in the chat, asking questions, saying hello. And we got people on YouTube, people on Twitch, and yeah, lots of cool questions coming in. So I am excited to do that. Why don't we dive right into those? I'm going to jump immediately to the shared screen. We now have Cinema 40 S22, if for some reason you aren't aware. Cinema 40 or Maxon announced a kind of a it's not really but it's like a 0.5 type version but it's S22 so if you have a subscription you automatically get that it's really neat and that's what we'll be working in unless we have to jump into some plugin that I don't have installed on it and I also have 21 open if need be so I'm going to jump around in the chat and see if I can find some sort of link somewhere um Everybody's posting things. I don't want to miss anything. But, uh, well, I'm just going to click on the first one I see, which is we got uh, uh, Java. Or let's see what you've got. Oh, it opened up in not the window I wanted it to. But let's see what we got. And then got to mute it right away because otherwise I can get, uh, <laughs> otherwise uh, YouTube copyright claims everything. Um, so what do we got? We got this is from Fat Criminal from uh, the UK. And let's see if you say specifically, okay, if you just linked to it, make sure if you put a link that you call out specifically the effect that you think is cool, because we got several things going on here. We got the look of these, we got the morphing from one shape to another, and then we've got soft body, or we got this thing undulating around, and then we also have cloth. There's a lot of different layers. So, and you know, I, you don't want to just recreate it definitively. Uh, Ruckus, yes, there used to be 0.5 versions back in the day, and they also used to release, they also used to release um, just modules. There was like the module concept, which is like hair would come out, and you wouldn't buy Cinema 4D. You would buy, you would buy like the base, and then also hair, and then also the MoGraph module, and then also like the character module. And you buy it was kind of like a little bit more a la carte, and then they unified that a little bit more. But in any case. Um, yeah, uh, okay, specifically the morphing of the object seems to be the question. So yeah, we can do a, I always say quick version and it ends up never being quick, but let's see if we can do something with it that doesn't take too long. Um, now they are morphing from a cube to a sphere. I would like to try and do a different shape of some sort. It'd be kind of fun is like we always morph to a sphere and spheres are fun to morph to, but they're also very easy. So let's see, let's make it a little bit more challenging for ourselves. Let's make two shapes that are, I mean, you know, we'll be sticking with primitives pretty much because those are clean, but maybe, um, maybe a slightly different shape. Like I like these, uh, pectonic shapes, which are, you know, the same shape repeated over and over again to make it, although I'm not sure how a buckyball falls in that category, even though I love the buckyball shape. Like this is, we go to it, the bucky, the bucky shape. It's just such a cool looking shape. I don't know. I don't know what it is about it, but I really like that shape. Uh, but in any case, uh, I, I'll stick with this more triangular one and let's morph it over into, and we're going to have to heavily subdivide it if we're going to get to some of these simpler shapes, but that'd be kind of fun. So let's do a capsule shape because that's, that's different. I'm going to make it a little volume wise, maybe just a little bit bigger, make it match a little bit more, make it a little bit smoother. And really all we need to do is worry about one of these shapes and that will morph into the opposite one. So I think that for evenness of polygons, it might be better to do the uh, platonic shape. So we're going to subdivide that one pretty heavily. Something like that. As if we can get to morph from one shape to the other. So to begin with, I'm going to use a... Man, I always get blind when it comes to these forms. Shrink wrap. I found it relatively quickly this time. So I'm going to start with a shrink wrap. Let's see if we can do that. I'm going to drop that in um, the shape that we want to morph. And the shrink wrap needs something to reference. I'm not... Okay, it did not need to be made edit. Well, I'm going to hide the one that it's referencing. And now you can see that we're not seeing the capsule at all, but look at this pretty good capsule shape that we're getting from this shape. So we have the ability to just morph from one to the other. So that actually works pretty well. And then there's some neat, there's some neat additional details that we might be able to do here. If you, if you put that into a null shortcut alt G, then this becomes uh, not a child of it. So now it can still do that morph, but it opens up the opportunity for you to rotate it. So I'm going to hit NB so we can see this a little bit clearer. And 
I can rotate this shape and you see it's going to continue to attempt to match it, but it's actually morphing all of these to slightly different positions. Now, one thing I'm noticing a little bit, and maybe it's, oh, it's probably because the shape is smaller than it, or it's kind of bigger. So a bunch of these pieces are pinching. I really don't want those to pinch. So if I were to try and make this a little bit cleaner, then I would probably... Like, you know, I kind of like this arbitrary rotation, but I might actually do a trick where we do a shrink wrap. And then afterward, I'm going to attempt a smoothing. So here's a smoothing deformer. And then you see it's going to smooth all these out and really clean them up. Now, the advantage of having done that is all of these are in approximately the correct location. I'm going to fully smooth this and maybe even do a few more iterations. So you see those have become very evenly distributed. And now I'm going to put another shrink wrap in and look how clean that geometry has become. So I did, you know, we're doing the morph twice, but one gets it approximately correct. Smoothing evens out the polygons and a second shrink wrap is taking that not quite perfectly matching smoothing and reapplying it. So that's actually a really nice end result to that. Now, let's see if we can get this fully going and working for us, which is uh, let's morph. I'm going to attempt to use a morph tag on this I wonder if we have to make it editable. Do you have to make it editable if you're remote linking? We'll, we'll find out. I'm going to add a rigging tag, and that specifically is the pose morph tag. We want to control the points directly. I don't want this pose. So instead, we're going to drag this one in. Now, we got to be careful because I'm not entirely sure how well this is going to work. And I always forget if you want to say, no, do we want to add it as an absolute or a relative? I mean, yes, yeah, so I'm going to say no because I think I want it to be a relative. So no. Now, this might not work at all because... First of all, let's hide this. There's several different layers. First of all, it might not work because we didn't make it editable, and that just might not work. So that's the first place we'll begin. I'm going to try and make it editable. And then there's, there's, we're referencing this, but this object directly might not have those morphs that we want. So I'm going to go back to edit, and I think what I'll try and do is put this into a connect object. So I'm going to say connect and hide that so we have a connect but i don't want to visually see it and now we will link the connect as what we're trying to morph to i'm gonna say no so it's relative and then go back to animate no that's still not doing it i would have thought that would have worked um let me think now uh, a couple things like we it wasn't editable when we first created it so maybe it didn't have the initial state there's several things that we might be doing weird here i'm trying to keep it as parametric as possible Otherwise, I would just make those directly children, which we can still do, but um, rigging, pose morph, points. Don't worry about that one. Let's link the connect, which should have an identical point count. Um, yeah, it still doesn't like that. Interesting. The I'm going to try doing the opposite just to see. Let's say yes. Well, that one did morph. Um, or it did change. Let's see if that is transitioning. Oh, it does transition, but it's rotated, which is not... I guess I guess this shape is, or that shape is rotated. So um, let's see if we can match the rotation of it. Unless it is already. Yeah, it is already. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, um, it is working. And you'll see it's spinning to match it because it's just going from point to point. Now it's kind of cool. I do like that little swirl. It's neat. But it, let's say you don't want that. That you don't want to have that happen. The reason that it's happening is that the axis is like this axis or this connect is essentially making a new axis and taking whatever points were fed in. So this is kind of rotated to this crazy angle, but then it's being reset to zero. So if we want these to match, it'd probably be a good idea to put these this back to zero. And now this should morph a little bit more cleanly. Yeah, so now they're matching in the way that they're morphing. Bloop, 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 bloop. Um, even though it's kind of weird. What? Actually, it still seems rotated to us. Is this null rotated? Hmm. I mean, because that's upward. I mean, I don't know. We're doing some slightly weird things. I, I didn't think this would be this complicated because we're doing this mixing absolute. But I wonder if, um, I wonder if there's, um, 
I mean, because we said absolute, we could say relative, but I don't, uh, I don't think that's going to change too much. And then rotational, I don't. I actually haven't even changed played with a lot of these settings. It doesn't seem to change too much. But yeah, we got axis and pose positions. Wow, there's a bunch of settings here I haven't played with. I should just tinker with those and see if there's anything, you know, that unlocks like new superpowers because that'd be really cool. Um, yeah, it's always weird when there's like hidden modes. You don't even think about it. Uh, I'm still a little thrown off why this is rotated. Because, oh, this is this is rotated now. Whoops. I guess, okay, we'll reset the PSR of that. Now it's back to being vertical. Okay, sorry. I, it did take you on the rotation. It makes sense. I was just missing a detail. Anyway, now you can see we're very cleanly morphed from one shape to the other. And I mean, and I, I really do like the smoothing trick. And it's all, I wonder if this had to have been parametric, though. I am going to attempt to swap that to this shape. No, okay, it does have to be made editable because that won't work on the not editable version. So we it's entirely parametric, except that we had this. But the way it morphed from one shape to the other, we definitely have control over. And this should be a relative link, I believe, which means, um, oh, no, did, oh, by saying no, did we kill that? Maybe. Because hmm. it says it's targeting that. So if we view... If we view the original shape and if we do something like turn off the smoothing we see that but that would tell me that this modified shape okay it did adapt to it i thought i thought it wasn't adapting to it for a little bit there but it does seem to be yeah okay so this is relative maybe it just doesn't refresh it needs like yeah it just needs a refresh okay that's why it's tripping me up so yeah, I mean, we have the ability of like moving the shapes around and morphing them in slightly different ways. But yeah, now we have a clean morph from what is, you know, visually a low poly object and it's going to morph and transition into a completely different shape that's not, doesn't have these hard edges. So that by itself is kind of cool. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so uh, one of the bigger questions there is, can we feed this? Well, a couple things. I mean, we've talked about these before. That's why I'm trying. When we kind of hit a question a second time that we've tackled a little bit, I, I don't mind re-answering, but I try and do it in a different way, which is why we're doing a slightly more complicated version. Now, something that's pretty cool that we've talked about, and I, I just really like it because it's something I didn't realize for a really long time, is we have a morph deformer. And so if we use a morph deformer, then this references a specific pose morph tag and it becomes that shape. But now we can control a pose morph with fall offs. So in this case, we can create a linear and we can actually do the transition by passing this through the shape. And it just gives you so much cooler looking morphs. Um, in this case, let's do a Y shape. So this one maybe can travel upward. I'm gonna pinch this to be a lot smaller. So we have our original shape and now we can pass down and morph into the other one. So that's pretty straightforward, um, just the way we're moving that, but let's make that even a little fancier. Let's record a keyframe there. We'll have this pass through relatively quickly, 40 frames, and then we'll move all the way down. So it's fully applied. So if we play and morph, you see it just kind of pops in that shape. But a um, couple things we could potentially do. One is this is a fall off tab, which means we have access to all the fields. So potentially we could do things like add a spring. Where is that hiding? It's now the decay. So we can add a springiness to this. I'm gonna unclamp it. Um, so now just by adding the springiness, I'm not entirely sure how it's gonna look, but yeah, look, just by changing that, we get this really nice jiggly transformation just from the fall off. And if I didn't clamp it, I think it would, yeah, you see, it's going to feel like it kind of hits a wall and then wiggles back, hits a wall, wiggles back. If we unclamp it, then essentially we're saying we can overshoot and then wiggle our way back down again. So that, I know, it's it's I really like that you can do these kind of things. If we crank up the effect strength, then we're going to get even more of a wiggle. And of course, it's moving based on how far that transitioned. So that is, you know, by itself pretty neat. And then you've got your other settings like linear. So we could actually kind of control the speed. If I pull this back, it's going to take longer to transition. And I think smooth is pretty similar. Yeah, I mean, they look slightly different, but linear and smooth, I've always kind of thought of as two different flavors of a similar thing. Um, so that's cool there. Uh, and I do I do like the springiness, but just to throw it out there, if we could turn off that delay, I should probably save. Let's leave that on because it's cool looking and I'll save this. Uh, this is a good time to mention, if you're new, all of these scene files will be available on 
Patreon for people supporting over there. So you can reverse engineer. I guess a reverse engineering is my favorite way of learning things. It's like you see something you know can work. And if you have the scene file, it's like, wait, how did they make that work? Take it, deconstruct it, see how they made it, and then rebuild it up to be something that's your own. Um, morph. Okay. So that is using a morph deformer. If we turn off of the delay, we can, of course, use the jiggle deformer. And it should do very similar things, but it has a lot more controls, of course. We put, I'm just going to put it in as a child. So actually, we'll turn it off just so you can see that it should be doing this little linear transition. So very harsh pop. But if we turn on a jiggle, not anything else, it's all default. You see we get a jiggle in that as well. Stylistically, you see it feels very different already. And you know you have a lot of control here over like the stiffness and the drag. So you can get a lot more of a wrinkly feel from that transition. And of course you can, I, I've always been kind of blown away that you can increase the strength beyond 100%. So you can actually get more wiggles and jiggles from it than, than even the motion would have allowed for. So I don't know, I think that looks, uh, that's pretty, that's pretty neat. Like there's so much more, it's so much more kind of dynamic than, than it would initially look. We could throw that into a subdivision surface. If you hold down alt, it'll automatically become a parent. And we'll just subdivide by one. And now you can see it's going to feel a little bit more wrinkly, a little bit more like cloth. A few extra frames here, and we should see it will settle in fully. So yeah, that's nice as well. And then I don't know what will happen, but we can always turn both of them on. So let's turn on our delay, which should cause some initial jiggle. They might fight each other, so it might make it worse. But let's see, we'll get more. It's just kind of like double wiggle. You know, two different types. Uh, one is going to be derivative of the second one. But well, I, you know, by cranking these two up, you're definitely getting a lot of motion between the two. So that's pretty cool. Now, uh, of course, um, I'll leave both on because they look weird. Save that as another flavor of the same file. Now, um, the, the obvious question is, can we put this into a cloner and make it work in a cloner? And honestly, like I guess with the setup we just did here, I don't know if we can. So let's see. Let's see if we can. We'll keep it really simple. Um, I'm going to kill the subdivision surface just because we don't need it taking up extra calculation time. Cloner. Make it a child. Um, we got some clones. There's not too, there's not too many. Uh, but I'm going to make it vertical. So we'll do that. And this is actually not encouraging to start out with because... Oh, actually, that no, it is. <laughs> if the linear field is part of the cloner, they're going to individually be calculated. But if it's not part of the cloner, it becomes external. And now uh, it's totally working. Wow, we're right out of the gate, too. You now see that with this cloner outside of the hierarchy, it now becomes this external thing that's being applied to them each individually. So I we can take this and pass through it and morph between those shapes. But everything else should still apply. All we need to do is change our keyframes a little bit. So at the time of zero, this will be the position. And then 40 seems fine. I guess it'll be quicker, but we'll scoot this over here. So it should morph to there. And we'll see if we can get that. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. What do we got here? What? Okay. Um, I don't know if this is a bug or if I'm doing something weird, but if I'm at the time of zero, Maybe the jiggle doesn't work in there. Let's see. No. Okay, it's the morph. I can turn off the, let's start removing variables. Okay, the delay. That's interesting. It doesn't like the delay inside of a cloner. I'm not sure why it doesn't, but it does not like, as soon as we turn this on, it's not refreshing anymore. I'm not sure if like, can we force it to refresh? Seemingly not. Interesting. Turn that off. All right, well, I mean, possibly a limitation. I'm not sure. I've never tried. Yeah, I don't use a spring too often in there. It was kind of a neat thing. Let's see if the spring does work inside of there. Oh, even the, I'm sorry, the jiggle. And the, even the jiggles stopped working inside of the cloner. Um, now, I wonder if we could make it work outside of the cloner. So if we were to put this into a null, put the cloner into a null, move the jiggle outside of it. No, even that doesn't seem to work. I'm going to try putting this into a connect object and don't weld. Interesting. The cloner seems to have killed all that nice jiggliness that we are getting. 
I'm not sure what to make of that. It's not something I'm willing to go too deep and explore right now because it's going to just be a lot of meticulous testing, A, a B testing one way and then the other. So, you know, that wouldn't be terribly interesting. But, but that is curious. Um, I don't have an answer for what's happening there. Um... And yeah, those are kind of the two ways you would get jiggle. We're still getting the morph, which I think is within, you know, the uh, the reference that we're seeing from uh, Fat Criminal is, you know, it, it is a pretty straightforward transition. So I think we're doing, we, you know, we're still able to do that. But we're, you know, we're losing the nice jiggle that we could have potentially gotten. Just for fun, I'm going to add a random effector just so we can get some variation on some rotations here. Because why not? Bloop, 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 bloop. I wonder, uh, do the fall off and then put the same fall off in one and then they'll spin to that position. I guess I might have spun those a little much now. 180, that's probably better. Spin, 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 spin. Um, and then this could probably survive with some decay, some springy, not decay, delay. Springiness there, turn off the clamp. So those will, those will automatically wiggle back and forth a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, interesting limitations. We got, you know, it works one way in the cloner and one way not in the cloner, but mm, kind of is what it is right now. There might be a slightly different hierarchy structure type of thing we might be able to do to make it work differently. But for now, um, let's not, you know, it's that this would be an easy project to get lost, lost in for the next hour. And we don't want to do that. So new file, check out the chat. All right. the first, That one was from Twitch. I'm going to check YouTube. Um... Uh, Shadow, I agree. NAB was really fun. Everything about that was great. Um, and I'm not sure you mean by cook techniques, but springs, I definitely have a bigger appreciation for springs. Um, let's see. And you can't put links. Um, uh, Monster is, uh, you might've put a link. You're saying look into this, but then there's nothing. So I think uh, that probably needs to be linked somewhere else. So uh, welcome Shadow and um Oh, uh, I forget what we um, decided to do the shortened name, but uh, uh, ABH, uh, welcome again. We got lots of people hanging out, though. Um, let's see. Well, I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Um, is it possible that two squares morph over into one rectangular frame? shape like object two squares morph into one rectangular frame shape uh, i'm not entirely sure what you mean but if i do understand what you mean though what i'm thinking is you you have you'd have a square and you want it to morph into a frame shape so what we'd have to do is give it the proper subdivision so i think in this case we just need to select this i'm going to hit us and it'll subdivide by one in between every point i have subdivided and essentially a frame shape i'm guessing hang on a sneeze <laughs> excuse me uh would be kind of something like that and uh, you can see i've given myself the points in which to make that shape so so then it's a very quick morph between those in the same, pretty much the exact same way we were just doing, except we'll say go to points. And now we're automatically in this new point mode. So I'm just going to eyeball this to do it quickly. But if we did that and then move this up and move this over, then we've created a shape that we can morph into. And if I set this morph now to animate, we should be able to transition between those two. So that becomes one half of a frame. Actually, that's not entirely true. If we go back to animate, this is going to be rough. But if I were to pull this over, so that's kind of a 45 degree angle, 45. Once again, I'm just eyeballing it. Go back to animate. Now, if we take a copy of that rectangle we just created and spin it 180, then now you can see we've got two two things that go into the shape of kind of a frame there. And if we were to morph them, you know, both morph them, they'll morph from two cubes into that final shape. And you could set their base initial pose. So I think if we go back to edit, go back to base pose, you know, potentially this, this one could have been living over here, go to the, oh, and go back to animate, go back to this one. Oh, I guess it moves the tire. Oh, it's relative. Uh, I'm not sure if we'd also have to, 
That's the base pose, but this one's way over there. So I think we have to go back to that one maybe and scoot it here. I'm not entirely sure. I might be making that up, but now we'll do the same idea over here. Actually, if that one's scooting over, I guess this might already work. So yeah, so now you got two squares and then boom, they'll morph into two of those. I'm not sure if that's what you mean, but you should be able to do the same morph to former transition, do whatever you want between them. So that's sort of that. Um, oh, this seems like a crazy uh, question from Johnny. Uh, how would I pull a wet soup a wetsuit type material off of an object so it pulls and stretches and then pings off like neoprene or rubber. Oh man, what a crazy question. I mean, first of all, uh, I think we might be able to do a basic version of that. And I like the challenge. So we will see if we can make something. I do want to spend or take just a moment and talk about if you're going to be doing this type of situation. Um, there's a behind the scenes in Incredibles, which, you know, obviously is going back a ways. But, you know, this is Pixar, a giant company with some of the best technology. And they're writing code to do this. And there's a, a scene where Brad Bird, there's a scene where Brad Bird wanted um, uh, why am I blanking on her name? Um, cause she, oh, Edna. He, he wanted Edna to take Bob's super suit and then pick it up in kind of disgust, throw into a garbage can, and then Bob reached down, pull it out of the garbage can, and it's like loose fabric all in one shot. And they were like, uh, this is impossible. How are we possibly going to do this? And they had to build a whole bunch of technology to be able to do it. So keep in mind that, you know, this was a giant challenge for Pixar. Um, having said that, let's do the most possible, or I'm trying to think. I mean, like you're saying a wetsuit-like material. It all turns into like, what shape are we pulling it off of? Especially with this being a live stream, I want to keep it pretty low poly. So I'm going to go back to the same shape we were using just a little bit ago. I'm going to make it editable uh, because I want to do a bevel. So I'm going to go hit M S for bevel. We'll do a little bevel on here. In fact, I'm going to even give it a extra subdivision just to give it a little bit more clean rotation to be able to pull off of there. So we kind of got a... Uh, uh, we've, we've got a, a piece of geometry, a little bit more piece of... Compl slightly more complicated piece of geometry. Apologies. Um, so then we can create a second shape. Now this one I'm going to, this is what we're actually going to deform. So let's make it a little bit bigger so it's not entirely encapsulated in it. We're going to leave it kind of square shaped, um, but we will subdivide this so that that is what can deform. I think we should be able to run pretty fast with this type of thing. So, okay, there's that. That's all good. Now... Um, let's make it, let's make it a little bit more visual. Like, like we keep, I, I got to make like a default scene here that kind of can look a little bit nice. Um, because yeah, especially with, we got the nice new viewport. Everything looks really nice these days. So us just playing with this vanilla world is, uh, you know, we gotta do, we gotta up our production quality a little bit. So let's make our wetsuit material. Why not? Well, I mean, just for the viewport. So we'll make it a very dark material. We've got reflectance, but we'll go to a GGX and no specular, lots of reflection, pretty rough, not too much reflection actually. And then a, some sort of uh, non dielectric conductor or a, a dielectric conductor just to pull up. We can make it more shiny. I guess it's supposed to look wet. You don't want it to be too much. So there we go. Just kind of a, just kind of a rubbery looking material. Remove that one. Oh, oh that's weird. Uh, whatever, but that should look pretty nice in the viewport. Um, so we'll apply that. We should be able to get the reflections from it. Now, my thought is let's try and pull this thing off from a diagonal, but it does need a hole cut into it. So um, I'm going to save this one right away because we're going to be dealing with some fairly complicated soft bodies. Um, um, soft body wet suit. Um, let's make it a challenge for ourselves. I mean, I think there's a good chance we'll need to come back to this geometry. So I'm going to keep a copy of it, make this editable and we're gonna make the hole really small. Just to make it like as, ch uh, you know, reasonably challenging here so it can be a really tiny hole there now you know that could be we could cut a slit in it instead we might actually end up doing a little bit of that just so we can pull it off but let's see how kind of rubbery and stretchy we can get this thing to be and you know if it works at all so uh this is our collider 
So that will become a rigid body simulation collider body. That's what we want. And then uh, this is going to be the suit and that will become a soft body. Soft body. Now we have two variables here or um, it's a soft body. If we just play right now, I'm actually kind of curious what it does right now. We've got default gravity. Everything's on. I'm going to save it. Yeah. So we hit play. We see it's running reasonably quickly. You see, you know, we are dropping frame rate a little bit. Uh, it's a new version of cinema. So I don't have my HUD FPS. I really like seeing the FPS in the HUD just so we can, you know, be able to tell quickly something's going. So, you know, it's about a third the speed that would actually be going in real time, but that's completely acceptable. Um, so you see right now it's default settings. It's actually doing a good job of maintaining the shape. Now we need to pull this off somehow. Now you actually can't create keyframes except at the time of zero, if there's a dynamic body on it. So we have to pull that off temporarily. And now we'll do the basic version, which will just be record the position. And then um, we'll have it go. I'm not sure how much time it's going to take. So I'm going to pull this down. Now you see, I'm actually going to pull it kind of this kind of like 45 degree angle. So it's just kind of pulling off in the direction that we kind of want to pull it. And we'll also keyframe that. And if we just hit play, then we should see that through the transition. All good. Now we can put our soft body back on. It should just, that should just work. Um, so now, okay, so that's animated, but it's not going to be pulling on it at all. And that's because we need to tell it to have some follow position. So again, I'm just going to quick save right there and give it a follow position of five, which is pretty weak, but let's see. Yeah, definitely pretty weak. I'm going to jump that up to 55 and there you go. Now you see it's pretty strong. Excellent. Now, uh, let's play with the friction. Now our collider uh, friction is a function of the friction of the collider, which is 100 multiplied by the friction of our, you know, in this case, the soft body now. So there's a friction, which is set to 90%. Uh, I'm just going to modify this one directly. So let's drop it down to 10%. So that now it's one, you know, 10 times 100. So it's 10%. So this should more easily be able to slide off of it. Now, okay, I, I mean, all things considered, that's not bad. Uh, now, a couple things we're seeing right away. Uh, a lot of this is having to do with uh, the base geometry. You can see it's actually doing a good job of pulling and stretching, and it suddenly snaps back, which is all good. Um, but it's obviously very dependent on our poly count. It's getting stuck on every layer of poly, which is actually kind of impressive. Um, as it gets tighter, it's like, nope, nope, nope. So a couple things we could do. First of all, you could subdivide it more. But I think um, I'm also going to give it a little bit of follow rotation just so it doesn't spin at the end. Let's see what that does. Pull, 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 snap. Yeah, and it's just, well, it's, it's still rotating a little bit. So we'll go easy on that. Um, now, uh, at this point, I think we can just play a little bit with some soft body settings so right now we have structural and that's trying to stop it from stretching now that's actually probably going to be one of our main culprits this isn't so much a, a, about bending it's about stretching now this is stretching quite a bit so this is kind of a weird argument between how much is that allowed to stretch here versus how much is it allowed to stretch this whole i mean keep in mind i mean let's keep in mind what we're forcing this to do look how big that triangle at the top is being forced to stretch because it's a tiny little hole and it doesn't have anywhere to go. So honestly, this is working incredibly well. So I'm, a, I'm actually not sure what to do because we both want it to, well, I, I like the amount of stretching. Personally, I think this is working kind of great right out of the box. But if you wanted it not to stretch as much, that's the same variable that's going to make it so this hole can't stretch. So if we were to, say, double the structure, then this is probably going to have a lot more trouble getting pulled off at all because that does not want to stretch. So yeah, it's not, it's actually kind of making it worse. So in this case, let's try lowering it. And by lowering it, then this can more easily stretch and actually might make the overall thing look a little bit less like it's stretching. It does return back to its original shape very well. Uh, well we also, uh, there's always the variable of damping, which is draining the energy out and it always has a bigger result. Honestly, in this kind of circumstance, I'm not, I'm not that sure of like, how, how much damping is going to affect things or or how it's going to affect it. It's just a very unique circumstance. Uh, also, while I'm thinking about it, I, th I think we put the friction down to zero. There's no reason to have any friction. Let's just have this be pure dynamic, pure like stretchiness. So this should be able to, yeah, you can see it's jumping more quickly between those. Um, burp, burp, burp. Um, 
Now, uh, a couple things to keep in mind. Right now, um, right now, I'm stretching this by doing a force position, but there's other ways you could do it. And they they could be dangerous, but let's temporarily turn off that so it's not trying to follow the position at all. And instead, let's just keyframe a shape. I'm going to create a sphere. I'm going to make it pretty big. You see right there, it's it's not at, it's not the full size, but it's pretty big. And we'll try keyframing that. So we'll keyframe and then give it about the same amount of time, 75, and we'll pull that in about the same direction right around there. Also keyframe that. And I'm going to make it a collider body. So you know, it's dynamic, but it's a collider body. And I very specifically want it to be a not static mesh, but a, a uh, ellipsoid. So now it's being told you have to calculate as a sphere. And that should make the calculations very accurate, which hopefully will make it so it can't escape from the shape. So let's just see if that moving is enough to like pull that. Okay, it is, it's working, but... It's only, you know, we, there's more polygons I can stretch. So it's going to have to travel further for us to be able to visually see this. So we're going to pull that twice as far. Keyframe again. We'll see what that does. Stretch, snap. Okay, actually, it, that did work. And so it, my point here being is like we can pull this in different ways. We could potentially put some springs on there. We are now using a different object, which is pulling it. You could pinch it in different ways. So... That's actually working very well. Um, I'm, I'm glad that both of those methods are working. Snap. Um, nice. Uh, I'll save this as kind of an alternative version. Um, now I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of what the best way of doing this because I, I do like this kind of like it's stuck on there and doesn't want to let go. Snap. Um, so it it turns into like stylistically what is working and not working about it. Now, one thing we could do is subdivide it more. The more subdivided it is, I think the smoother that would be. In addition to that, we could grab our original mesh and give it some, like essentially give it a bigger hole or cut it a little bit. Uh, in that case, we lost the original polygons, but I'm actually going to cut this. Now, I actually, if anybody knows an alternative way of doing this, let me know. But let's say that we had like an open seam here that's kind of like a neck hole. I know this is five-sided, so it won't quite work. But I'm going to select these polygons right here. And I'm going to say disconnect. So the shortcut for that is U D. So this is the disconnect tool. So now you can see this is not a part of it. Ooh, no, let's see. Is it not working because of the soft body or did I do something wrong? U shift D. It'll pop open this. Yes, preserve the groups. Okay, well, I'm not sure what I messed up, but you can see that's now completely disconnected. It's not a part of it at all. But now I'm actually going to hold down shift and then convert it to points. And I'm going to deselect the points that I that are like, those are truly the ones that should be disconnected. But um, actually I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna turn on visible elements and let's, gra let's grab one extra one right there. So not those. So what I'm gonna do is re-weld all of those points. Actually, does that make sense? Because we disconnect, I'm gonna kind of just select the outline here. Really we wanna select everything but those other points, but I should be able to just do that and it'll work. Now what I'm gonna do is optimize. So UO is a shortcut. Um, or I can hold use shift though, but what essentially what I'm doing is popping open this optimize. I'm saying weld, but it's only doing the currently selected ones. So I disconnected everything and now I'm saying reconnect everything that I currently have selected. So it's not a very visual thing. It's hard to tell you did it, but I'm confident that we did the correct one there. I could be wrong, but now when I pull, hopefully you'll see, yes, there's a nice big cut there. It looks like I, I, I accidentally pulled a little cut somewhere else, but now there's a bigger cut that's able to pull and stretch that now. And just because there's a bigger hole, you can see that this is not stretching anywhere near as much. So that's a thing. That's you know a thing to keep in mind. Um, I wonder... I wonder if there's additional variables that we could do here. Um, let's see. We have, well, there's a structural. I'm trying to think. Um, first, uh, something I would kind of like to do is drain a lot of energy out from the system. And I'm not sure how well we'll be able to do that. But let's let's start by putting in a lot of damping. So I'm going to put in 99% everywhere. 99%, 99%. 99%. And just hit go on that and see if it changes much. Now, the hope here is it's going to be less jiggly. Yeah, actually, it's, that almost went entirely as far as I wanted it to. Um, what's happening is I'm going to turn off gravity too. Let's command D, dynamics, no gravity. So we turned off gravity in the scene. 
so now you can see as this gets pulled, I mean, it's resisting, but you see that that shape is being maintained a lot. It's draining the energy out. And the, the point here is I wanted this to be less like biting onto the edge of the shape. And you see now it, it isn't. Um, now, if you want the opposite, if we really want this to be biting the surface, do the opposite. Get rid of all the damping. So I'm going to say zero, zero, zero. And now there's no energy drain from it. So it's at full power all the time. So this is constantly trying to, re trying to return to its original shape, which means that should really kind of clamp down and try and bite back as it gets pulled over the various shapes. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of fun variables here that we can definitely play with, um, and that that's going to return to a shape. Now, if, you know, I was even trying to think if there's additional ways. I'm trying to think if there's additional ways of like controlling the structural or the expanding because you have things like rest length. So I was wondering if if you if it would be a good idea. It probably isn't. And it seems like it's it, because it's actually working pretty well. But I'm going to re-weld everything. I select all and hit UO and everything should be welded. Essentially, we're back to the original geometry. So that big hole isn't cut in it anymore. And I, a weird thought I have is what if we were feeding a vertex map in where it could grow in certain areas? So it's kind of like faking it. It's like, oh, it, it's looser there. Or we could do the same thing in structural where the structure becomes very weak in very certain areas or the sh you know, like all of these i mean potentially all of them so what's a way i would do it i'm going to grab the original uh plate tectonic shape open it up make it editable and i'm going to actually ooh, uh, pull that down to one make this editable and then make a loop so i'm going to loop that selection right there ul shortcut shift to c edge type in the word edge so we have edge to spline all i did was convert that selection to a spline and the reason for doing that is now inside of the suit. Yes, inside of the suit, we want a vertex map. So I'll say set vertex weight. It'll all be set to. Actually, I, by default, we want it to be 100%. So there we go, 100%. And then we're going to use the fields inside of it. Um, I'm going to get rid of the freeze. Uh, and the thought here is if we. I guess I didn't, it doesn't matter what the initial state is because it always gets taken over by this. But we drag in the spline. Currently it's set to the curve. And actually, I, we don't want the curve. We want a radius. So here's a radius around that. So I'm going to increase that radius a little bit like that. So now essentially we have this radius, which is set right there on the geometry. And that's not going to move. And that's saying like right here, it's 100%. Everywhere else, it's zero. Now that's kind of the opposite of what we want. So we got lots of tools to fix that. One of them we could say invert. So now the opposite is happening. So those are now weaker. And if those are weaker, then here's a thought is let's feed this vertex map into the structural, into the shear, into the flexion. And essentially all of these are really weak when they're right on that corner, but it's going to constantly move away from it. So they'll get their strength back again. So does that make it so that they, they can more easily slide there? I don't know. It's an experiment. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we're back in the original shape, so it's going to be a little bit harder to compare. Um, it definitely has a it definitely has a doesn't want to get pulled off type of vibe. I'm actually going to clear all three of those just for a moment. And let's see what it looks like by default, because we need to compare it to something. Well, this one's holding out all the way, so they're definitely having an effect. Now, let's go. I mean, so, okay, if they're having an effect, we're going to weaken all of them. So it's it can really stretch in that place. It can really shear. It can really flexion. So essentially bend and and, and tilt. Um, but let's go back in the vertex map and make this even stronger. I'm going to increase the radius. So you can see there's more of a red area. And in fact, we could create a spline here. And I'm going to increase the red more. Let's see, if, is that actually doing it? Oh, that's a radius fall off. I don't want to control the radius fall off. I want to control the remapping. In the remapping, we'll turn on the curve. And as I pull, hmm, hang on, I got to check. I got, I'm going to hit undo because we kind of lost everything there. Remapping, curve. I don't, I don't know why I lost the red stripe. I just undid until it came back. Now, as I pull this, you see that the red band, the red part of it's going to get bigger. Um, but we're not kind of expanding the lowest place. And we've talked about this before that a lot of the springs uh, need 
like one, two, three connections to do their thing. So it might have been too small to be having too much of an effect. So now that should be significantly different. Let's hit play on that. Well, it, I mean, it's definitely coming off easier than it had been before. So yeah, I'm not sure. It's interesting. Um, we could subdivide it more. We could... Um, I don't know. There's a lot of different things. <laughs> the, the snap on that's actually pretty fun. And snap. And it's 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 escaping the sphere. I kind of don't want it to do that, but that's kind of a different variable. Um, we could drain energy out from the overall thing, which is not from here, but maybe from the forces. We can do a linear damping of 90%. So that should drain the energy out quite a bit overall. Oh, I, I actually, uh, impressively, that's draining the energy out here to an extent that it doesn't even get pulled. I didn't expect that. Um, pull, 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 pull. It's not quite pulling it far enough. Um, the sphere is doing a good job, but we are getting a lot of deformation on these points here. So, you know, we'd have it's, it's a it's a like it's a literal big push and pull. Um, I guess just maybe to close this one off. Um, let's try the third method, which is instead of pulling this with the sphere, let's pull it with a spring. Um, the concept is incredibly similar, except we'll be able to control a dynamic fall off on it. So let's see if this works. And I mean, part of this is just me wanting forgiveness from the springs because I ignored them for like 10 years, but they're really good. So what do I want to control? I want to control the suit with the spring and Actually, object, that will be object B. Object A will be empty. So I'll reset that default. So it's empty. So it's just going to attempt to reset there. Now, I don't want this to be connected to the center of mass. I want it to be set to a point selection or a polygon point. Polygon point is nice and quick because I can just drag this through until we are pretty much on the correct point. I'm not sure which one it is. It's going to kind of... Okay, maybe it would have been quicker in this particular case to do a polygon point, but I'm going to keep doing it. We can we can figure this out. Oh, almost, almost. Okay, right around there. Yeah, I, I don't have the exact point, but we're pulling right there. Now, um, I'm gonna set the rest length, and we need to keyframe our spring. So it's the exact same idea again. Keyframe the position. Give it another 75. We'll pull this way down. Keyframe that. Now, one of the differences. I don't know how well this works, but one of the big differences here. Oh, and I'm going to, mm, let's put the, I'm going to put the damping back to five because it was working well on the five and let's save this one again. I should name that one here, but we'll rename this one spring. Now, uh, this is going to pull. Now the strength on this isn't terribly strong. Wow. That actually worked really well. Jeez Louise. Um, holy cow. The spring's working great. Um, is really like pulling that quickly off of there. The uh, I thought we'd have to change a bunch of settings because I didn't think it would almost work at all. I thought it would kind of break, but there's something very important here called the region of influence, which essentially is a fall off from there. And I mean, typically I just kind of think of this as this is tugging on 20% of the points. So unlike, it just kind of is pulling all the points in that direction. So unlike the sphere, it's going to be very specifically pulling all that. Now, if we shrink this down to 1%, then we should see this going to pull on a very tight section, and that might start a little bit more. We could crank it up to something really big. Um, so this is kind of tugging everywhere. I'm, something I've never done, I'm kind of curious what will happen. I'm going to say 100%. So that should be kind of pulling on every point. Yeah, look at that. That's interesting. Wow, I never tried doing 100%. So it's a spring that's trying to pull every point to where it is. You see, it's actually stopping it from moving away as well. Boing, boing. So that's actually working quite nicely. Um, interesting i wonder um even the um uh, to be honest a lot of this this we, we you know you don't want to maintain the shape it, you know if, if it was like a, a wetsuit it would be very rubbery when it comes off and like just kind of flop into a pile so this flexion is way too high that's trying to maintain the overall shape of it and um this will probably make it pull off easier as well um, but yeah, you see, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a little bit more. If we had gravity turned on, that'd probably flop on the ground a little bit more. Yeah. Flexion. You can kind of think of as like the, uh, rotational stiffness of it. Bring, um, yeah, I think that's as far as I'm going to go on this one, but there's a, there's a lot of possibilities with that. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by the way the spring was behaving here. It's behaving very well. I'm, I'm impressed at how well the spring was working for us. We didn't even change any settings really like the stiffness or, um, the damping is fine by default and, 
you're getting a pretty good tug off there. Now, like I said, I mean, it's simulation. It's going to be even here. We're dropping down to, you know, I, I guess as it gets pulled away, it's running quicker. But, you know, this is pretty low poly. If there was a big wetsuit or something, it'd be more complicated. But but we did kind of give ourselves somewhat the worst case scenario, which is a very small hole, a difficult shape to get pulled off of. And we kind of did in three different methods. But yeah, thanks for the question. It was neat to explore that a little bit. Alrighty, um, jump back to Twitch. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, I really like the one hundred percent influence sack. It was uh, it was working quite well. Um, let's see. There was uh, where there's that's supposed to be a honey question, but I haven't really seen it come in as a link. Um, I said I'd keep an eye out for it, but um. There's a lot of questions coming in. I, I'm going to apologize. We'll, we'll probably spend a little extra time. You know, as long as we, everybody's been in quarantine, we've been spending plenty of time, uh, extra time doing questions. Uh, and we're only halfway through. So I'll try and go a little extra long, but let's see what we can jump around. Uh, right now, uh, Jack has a question. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, wait, that's the honey. It is a honey question. Sorry, your name had been yellow and it was turned blue. It kind of made me blind to it. All right, let's jump over here. Uh, okay, so we got Empty, which is a... We definitely have gotten questions about his work or hers. I'm not sure. Questions before. Um, now, they are using Houdini. So that's something important to keep in mind. Um, is there any audio? It doesn't seem like there is. Um, oh, man, that looks great. But there are these bubbles. Well, first of all, this is just a big giant liquid sim. So that by itself is kind of a big challenge. The... Um, but if, you, if you're not forcing yourself to do a full liquid, then you could, there's a couple different ways of thinking about this type of stuff. If we're just, if we were just blobbing over things, um, let's see, what's a good, uh, what's a nice test bed here that we can make something really blobby and oozy. Um, let's see, we'll just make a little structure. We'll even, oh, let's make a honeycomb structure. That sounds kind of neat. Actually, that's a proper shape already. So we'll make that. We shall make it six-sided, make it a little bit bigger, give the hole a decent size, but still give that some thickness. Actually, it's going to be double the thickness once we clone it. So we'll do that. You should see it's incredibly low poly. Actually, there's some height segments. We'll get rid of those because we don't need them. Uh, a bevel could be a good idea. Um, and then... Mm, I've... <laughs> This is going to be a complicated shape and I kind of don't want to do a big A-B test of it because it'll just take up a bunch more time and we got lots of questions coming in. But uh, suffice to say, what I'm going to do is make, instead of making that out of a tube shape and making it something that has to be calculated polygon by polygon, let's instead make that structure out of a cube. So I'm going to make a radial cube and i'm going to pull these out if we make six sides you can see we can end up with that exact same shape but the advantage to doing it that way is we can tell this shape to be a rigid body actually it's a collider body simulation collider body but i can tell this to calculate as a box and that will calculate incredibly accurately so it's more objects but it should be very clean now Something I'm actually not sure about would be if that's dynamic and we clone it, and then we put that into a cloner as well. So we'll copy that cloner, put this in a second time, and now make it a honeycomb array, which will lay flat on the ground. And actually the scale is pretty much perfect right out of the gate, except I made everything too thick. Um, Ding, 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 ding. Uh, I don't want to go overboard, but we'll do something like that. But these are all a little bit too, like I said, we we'll double them up. They get doubled up. So we'll cut that in half. We'll set that to 40. There's going to be a little bit of space in between. This cloner is going to need slightly different spacing. I guess they still meet in the same corner. Nice. That's exactly what I wanted them to do. So there we go. Uh, so it should be pretty clean, pretty low poly. I'm just curious if these are properly going to be dynamic. So the easiest way to test, I suppose, will actually, uh, this is super easy. We'll just make a copy of this cloner, create a sphere, drop it into there. And now we should have a honeycomb of spheres. I shall randomize them slightly. There we go, and make those 
Uh, rigid bodies. Hit play. Yeah, seems to be. Yeah, they, they okay. It's it's perfectly colliding. The, a clone of a clone is still looking at the dynamics tag that was a super child, which is nice to know. So those are now fully dynamic and working properly. So now we need our blob. Now there's a couple different. I'm trying to think of the way we want to make our blob. Honestly, um, this could be. I got a couple different thoughts in my head. Well, it's, it's kind of a new question. We haven't really tackled this, so let's see. Let's 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 see what we can do with it. Um, this is number three, a, it's going to be honey bubbles. Yeah, that's fine. Honey bubbles. And this will just be a soft body. So here's the first thought. Um, what's the best way to make a fun? Oh, I mean, I, the first one doesn't have to be super dynamic. I mean, it would kind of be fun to make a splat shape. Um, yeah, let's, let's kind of make a splat shape. Why not? That seems neat. Um, I'm not sure how well this is going to work. It's, I don't know how well it's going to work. It's going to be a little bit weird, but let's. I'm going to use a sketch tool. Not, I don't usually use a sketch, but let's make something that's just a little bit blobby, and extrude that in R in S22. It automatically extrudes in the proper direction, so you see it's going to actually extrude upward. Make sure my spline is closed. Change this to be a uniform, so the subdivisions are very even. And drop that way down. In fact, down to zero, and you can see we've got very low poly even subdivisions. Pull this up into the air, and inside of the extrude, we want to control the caps. I want them to be a regular grid, and twirl that down, and we have some controls here. I'm not sure what the spacing is. Let's try 100. Oh, there we go. Pretty good. So the regular grid is, let's make it quad dominant. So it's trying to make them rectangles, and you see we end up with this shape. Um, if we're making a blob, it'd probably be a good idea to give this one subdivision going up. And let's do a single smoothing tag. Smoothing. Put that after the spline so we don't need a null. Oop, not a child of sign, but not child of the spline, but after the spline. I can pull this forward or back, but you see it's going to like round those corners, make it a little bit more blobby. So something like that. So keeping it nice and clean, low poly. So that is our shape. So if that is the case, can we run a soft body sim on that. I'm not going to change a settings yet. Let's just see what that does by itself. So let's hit save and let's uh, hit one frame forward and see if anything happens. One frame forward, see if anything happens. Okay, cool. It doesn't seem to take too long to calculate, although I'll have to save into my new file because it's not remembering my HUD. to see our FPS down here, but I, I feel pretty confident to hit play. Okay, that's completely fine. It's very low poly. It's running very smoothly. Um, now, it's going to try to pass through itself. Um, I'm not terribly worried about that, actually. We could get rid of self-collision, and it's going to run real fast, but we'll worry about that in a little bit. So uh, let's make it so it can be very melty and oozy. So uh, we'll do that by pulling way back on the structure, and let's move, give ourselves a couple extra frames. Way back on the structure, very little flexion, very little shear. And let's just keep on lowering these until, and damping, let's get rid of the damping. Doesn't need to drain the energy out. So you can see it's going to flatten itself quite a bit. Now I wonder if we could do some pressure. Pressure of, whoa, nice and blue. Um, let's do a pressure of 0.25. So it doesn't want to go flat. And uh, all right, well, let's structure down to one. Flexion zero. Okay, flexion zero seems to have kind of done something. We're getting some interesting properties. Okay, it's finally starting to melt through the holes a little bit. Um, structure, I don't, I think a structure of zero just means it'll completely, yeah, you can't do zero because it'll do that. We don't want that. So, um, it looks like there's a refresh issue, but uh, we'll do point 0.1. Can, is point 0.1 still going to work? No. Looks like one might be the minimum, so we're going to leave that on one. So there we go. You get something really kind of blobby, and it can it can kind of melt through the holes a little bit. It's allowed to do that, so that's nice. Um, it's working well. Um, doesn't refresh on zero, which is a little bit of a pain. Save it. Um, okay, so it's running really quick. Uh, I think something we do to make it go even better is going to be turn off self-collisions, and that should make this run quicker. And now it doesn't care about passing through itself, which for our beginning, I think is completely fine. <laughs> um, 
yeah, maybe we want the structure or something to be a little bit higher because this is pulling all the volume down there. That's flattening and that volume's inflating. So that's kind of funny to me, but um, it's running so quick that I think we can throw a few extra polygons at this thing. So uh, in the spline, if we go up to one, it's going to double it. Eh, it's not that bad. And then the uh, spacing will lower. Oh, that's direction. Oops, um, caps, that's what I wanted. I saw the number 100 and I misread it. That's fine. I mean, as I increase this, it's exponentially increasing the number. So something kind of like that could be okay. Um, I'm going to actually extrude it upward a little bit more. Yeah, just to even that out. And we'll pull back on the smoothing. There we go. Um, I mean, still subdivide a lot more on the edges, but let's just see what that gives us. Burp. It's exploding. Now, here's something that's interesting. The uh, You see this exploded on us, but it's not slowing down. Uh, the exploding kind of slow down pseudo crash that you get in cinema, that only happens if you have uh, self collisions on because it kind of explodes and it starts intersecting other polygons and it's trying to fix itself. But if it doesn't care that it's passing through other polygons and you see it just it can explode and not kind of crash, not freeze you up as it's trying to do insanely high calculations. Um, so, yeah, it's just something to keep in mind. Um, Soft body. I'm going to increase the structure. Let's give it a little bit of flexion. As we increase the uh, point count, then these numbers can be higher. Um, yeah, it's still exploding. Um, it's, it's fascinating how that pulls out the volume. The initial stuff is fun. Um, but we really don't want that to happen. I'm going to increase the structure to five and I don't know this volume pressure actually could be a little bit of a culprit on this. I mean, this is just going to pass on to itself if we don't leave volume on, um, there's volume conservation. So maybe we need a little bit of that. Yeah, actually volume conser conservation seems to be pretty good. And now we can start getting maybe, you know, and this is just like a quick model where we can maybe get some melty shapes. And honestly, based on what we have, it'd probably be good to do some extra little splatty offshoots from this. But even right now, you can see we're getting kind of a fun little drippy-ness going. So I was just trying to build a rig that we have a very clean control over. So um, like I said, we've got our nice new renderer, our nice new viewport going. So let's make this look a little bit nicer. We'll make a, uh, let's make a yellow-ish honeycomb and then we can have our honey let's see how well the transparency looks i think uh, it might not look amazing because well i don't let's just find out um no color transparency yes and let's make it a nice warm bright yellow and that doesn't actually seem to translate too much in the viewport and let's make it to remove that we have our transparency based there's a specular. We don't want roughness. Do we have to add a second specular? Add a GGX. Yeah, now that becomes shiny. And no specular, please. Don't worry about it. Yeah, nice and shiny there. And just for, because we're just, this is just for the viewport, but let's make it nice and yellow reflection. Maybe a little more orange. There we go. Nice. Uh, now, obviously, that would be less transparent and whatnot, but it's just to make the viewport look a little nicer. Um, so now we should be able to get our kind of blob going, and it's trying to preserve the volume. It's very bouncy right now. We could definitely drain some energy out, but now we do get some drips, and they're being conserved pretty well. Uh, actually, with that volume conservation, I wonder if we could lower these amounts, and we're still getting a reasonable playback frame by frame. So I am going to increase this a little bit more, and by increase it, I mean decrease the scale like that. And honestly, I don't think we need the extra extrude because we're smoothing at that one on the ex the extra one on the edge is just um just creating extra polygons on um, polys on the edge that we don't need. So it might be a little bit slower, but it's going to be a little more even. Um so yeah, okay, we're getting these kind of oozing around a little bit. There's a lot of jiggle to it, so we could I mean, some damping actually with no damping on flexion or that that's probably doing a lot of that and then we can also add some friction and or um yeah that's calmed down a little bit anyway um but anyway it's that's just kind of an oozy thing now let's say that we are very happy with that shape and now we want to deal with the bubbles um so that one's fine i'm gonna save it 
uh, this actually can be incredibly straightforward. We're going to create a cloner. And inside the cloner, mm, kind of want to use a cube. Yeah, I'll use a cube. We're gonna, we got cube. And I'm going to set the cube to be quite small, maybe five by five by five. How small is that? That's really small. Let's do small. Um, I'm not sure how big this overall scene is, honestly. Okay, so 20 by 20 by 20 is about right. Put that into the cloner. The cloner is going to make a bunch of clones. I want to see these really clearly, so let's make... Uh, I'm going to make a luminance material. The luminance will be a nice bright yellow. I mean, everything's kind of yellow, but that should make it easy to see this. Uh, it's going to clone onto an object. And the object is going to be our blob. And I guess in this case, it'll be our extrude honey. And by default, it's going to be creating a bunch of these on the surface, but we actually want it to be on a volume. So it's just randomly creating, it should be randomly creating these inside of the volume. So we can, it seems to actually, oh, that's maybe not surprising. The volume, it's going to, it's going to take a lot of effort to, um, calculate this volume. You can see that my viewport has dropped dramatically and the count is not very high. And it's because it's having to calculate a pretty complex volume here. So, um, so I'm actually, let's see, I'm going to do an experiment. Um, let's instead do a grid array and I got a couple different thoughts. I, I got a bunch of different methods we might be able to do, but let's do, let's just try doing something like this. I'm essentially going to eyeball to make sure that we're catching, potentially catching the entire area. And let's give it a little bit of height as well and catch the height. So that's everywhere a bubble can go. And then create as many clones as we want to. So you can see, we'll, oh, and let's change this to end point. So now we can increase our count. It's just going to fill this out. Fill, oh, well, not too many of those. Fill this out. Nice. And then you see, you know, this is, you know, we're creating all these clones. It's not slowing us down at all. So that volume calculation was really killing us. So uh, we've got all those. Uh, first of all, we probably want to random. Let's randomize those a little bit so they can move all over the place. And we'll probably be scaling and all that. We won't worry about that for now. But the most important one is I'm going to select the cloner and create another effector. This time it'll be a plane effector. And I guess we probably have to make this editable because at the end of the day, it's going to be the same calculation. Why did, oh, the plane effector is pushing them up. But I want them to be controlling the visibility of the shape. And in the... Let's create a fall off. And just for clarity, let's create a spherical field. And there we go. Now you can see in the spherical field that they're only existing where the spherical field says they should be. That's because of the visibility. But I don't actually want a spherical field. I actually want the entire piece of geometry here. And currently it's viewing the individual points, but I'm going to say I want to view the volume of the shape. And actually right now it's not doing too bad of a job. Um, the, uh, I, I do have to say it's creating them. They're definitely existing outside of the volume though. And the order of operations on these effectors, it should be the random and then the plane. So I'm not sure why we're seeing these outside of the surface. Um, yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with that. Uh, we're not subdividing. It's a smoothing. I wonder if it doesn't if it doesn't see the effectors inside. Uh, it may or may not. We gotta do some tests. I wouldn't be surprised actually if there's a. Don't worry about the normals. Oh, that's the object. Uh, layer volume clip the shape. I'm not sure, even sure what that means. Um, I thought there'd be more settings there, but there isn't. Um, what I was going to say is maybe it doesn't see the deformers, so it doesn't see the smoothing. So if we put that into a connect and then feed the connect in, then that's the final geometry. Oh, okay. It seems to be the case. It wasn't seeing the deformer, so now it's seeing them inside. So now all of these exist in this entire spot. So let's just say that that is indeed where we want all of our bubbles. Um what I would do in this kind of circumstance is you can't leave it like as this live cloner. I mean, potentially you could if you had the right situation, but that's not what we're going to do. Now, uh, I want to round these out a little bit. So I'm going to turn on fillet. We're going to do a one subdivision and I'm going to make these look as spherical as we can. So essentially, I'm just trying to make the lowest poly bubble possible. And then they're a little big now that we can see them very clearly. So I'll shrink them. And now let us 
um, change the scale randomly. So we got our random, turn on a random bit of scale as well. Let's do a uniform scale. They don't have to be uniform, but that's fine for this case. Um, absolute scale, and we'll start scaling them down to negative 0.9. So they can get pretty tiny. So there we go. We got all these bubbles. And of course, we have control here. We could create additional ones, as many as we want. So we get all of our nice little bubbles in there. So now all of that work was just essentially to generate this geometry. There might be some work we could do where we could push these away from the surface, but I'm not worried about a couple on the corners. And uh, here's my thought is like, okay, if this is our final shape of our blob and these are the bubbles, then we just need this final piece of geometry to be driven by where our honey goes. Now, can we do that live or do we have to make it editable? That I don't know. So I'm going to take this cloner which we will rename bubbles, put into a null. And with that in mind, save it because we haven't saved in a little while. Honey, it is 3B. Honey, our soft body. Because we already said bubbles. That's fine. We'll just save it as the next one. Save. Uh, okay, now we shall use a mesh deformer. Ba -ba 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 mesh deformer. So we'll put a mesh deformer in with that null. And let's see if this works. The object it's going to view is going to be the honey, the extrude honey, not the connect. And I'm going to tell this to do surface area so it can catch the ones on the outside. Initialize. It's going to hide it and all this stuff. We actually don't want it to do that because we're going to keep that honey rendering. But this, in theory, is linked to that. And anywhere it goes, it should force those to move. I don't know how well that's going to work. So let's go one frame forward. Seems OK. One frame forward. Okay, it's working. Oh, I mean, it's not taking too long, but you actually see our mesh is not moving. Um, that geometry is not moving with this. So maybe this bubbles is not going to move along with it, but uh, we can still try and make a connect object. So it should drive that. So I'm going to reinitialize and get rid of those tags. Oh, it, no, it, they're there. Now let's do the test again. One frame forward, one frame forward. Hmm, it's taking a long time to calculate or what's the deal? What? Okay, now it's going. It's still not moving. Um, that's, wait, no, it does. Oh, it did move. It's taking it. It's got to refresh to do it. But you see they actually all moved with it. So I don't know how all this is going to work. But let's do a viewport render. So I'm going to change our display here. And let's also apply the uh, bubble. Oh, if we apply the same bubble material, we won't see it. So we'll have to leave it here. But if you were to apply the same bubble material or merge them into one shape, I think that would work. But, um let's the spherical field is done let's send this out to the picture viewer so let's use the nice new s22 renderer and say i want to do a viewport renderer um we don't eh, maybe we can save we'll save it as an mp4 typically you should do like a sequence but nobody's got time for that renders honey one output uh your viewport renderer tends to eat up your ram really quickly i know we can change the ram settings but that's dangerous in the in the i, I felt some slowdown from that from in the past so i, I want to go easy on it so there we go that's uh gonna save all that keep it relatively light that's fine we're just looking for the motion here frame up our camera a little bit and let's see what we get see if it actually now i think about it it could uh oh, let's give it some frames all frames um, because it kind of wasn't refreshing properly in our viewport. I, I wonder if it's going to here, uh, our HUD elements are all on. Uh, and then also, uh, oh, uh, oh, I mean, I like that you can put the HUD elements on. That's neat. But, uh, I think I just lost control of my cinema. <laughs> yep. I think we done lost it. It didn't like something we just did. Did not like something. And uh, yeah, I'm getting nothing here unless it's trying to calculate the entire thing, in which case that'd be crazy. Anyway, so to the task manager we go. Uh, I got two copies of cinema. I don't know which one it is, so we'll guess. Hey, I got it right. And reopen. It's opening on the other screen. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, 
Boom, open. Uh, we saved just a second ago. We might have lost our render settings, and that's about it. Maybe not even. Um, divide by two. Divide by two. All frames. Viewport render. Save. MP4. Nope. Episode renders. Override honey. Save. Yes. Uh, save my scene file. Um, what should we change? Um, copy viewport settings. Filter geometry only, please. It's a nice new checkbox. This is once again an S22 feature. So let's save the geometry only. I'm going to save that again. Maybe we'll freeze. Maybe we won't. I don't know. Frame ourselves up a little bit. Save. We'll see if that works. Yes, override. Okay, well. Um, oh, wow. The uh, Even the soft bodies aren't. It's not uh, It's not properly even the soft bodies there. So that's too bad. I mean, that's great. But and here's the problem is that there's a good chance that... Let's see. Oh, if I hit render, you see we get this. So it's kind of our honey texture. Um, I'm going to leave it like that. So let's try rendering out the standard instead and see if it uh, properly calculates or not. Is this a viewport refresh issue or is it inherent into it? Um, no, they're still passing through, which is too bad. Um, and then it seems like our honey isn't... Are we just not giving enough time? Oh, there it goes. Okay. I thought maybe it wasn't melting down, but... Just needed a few extra frames. That's not horrible for no uh, no lighting. Um, okay, so that's not sadly not working. Now, what I would do would be to make a copy of that in case we need to go back to it. Hold down control. As I click, it'll turn off the entire hierarchy, which is parametric, so it turns it off. Make our mesh editable. And now we just get this bubbles pass. And now we can put the mesh deformer directly as a child, which could not hurt. Initialize that. We don't need these. And now frame forward. Oh, and this connect isn't needed anymore. So we can actually pull that out of the connect. And that actually could be could potentially be causing issues as well. So now those are all baked down. Now let's scoot. Is that still not going to move? Hmm. Doesn't this typically work? Unless that's, was the mesh deformer? No, it's on the proper object. Mm -hmm. um, let's think. What could we possibly be missing here? I mean, we could bake the honey down. We could bake the honey itself. That's starting to be like, I, I don't know. That, we're getting completely away from a parametric workflow, if that's the case. Um, but eh, we already baked some of it down. We'll give it a go. I'm going to try putting that, make a, uh, a connect. We'll drop that all in there. I wonder if we just run the simulation on that. Seems dangerous, but uh, maybe we'll do this as a step, stop gap measure. I'm going to drag in the connect instead and initialize on that. We'll see what that does. Uh, I kind of, I don't know. We'll just find out. Hit play. Or, you know, one frame forward, one frame forward. Nope, the blob is moving. It's not moving those. Now, did I, am I, am I fundamentally not doing something right? Or, or does this just need to be made editable? Make that editable. That is the connect. It is viewing. Initialize again. Delete the handy but not needed tags. And let's see if that works. Now it's working. Uh, so it doesn't like... Uh, that's, not, that's slightly disappointing. Well, in any case, now you can see actually it's because of, because we baked everything down. It's running pretty much real time in here. We don't even need to render it out. You can see that those bubbles are stuck in their relative positions and they're being deformed by the points around them. So this, these will actually follow the blob down. They'll actually, if the, if the mesh stretches, the bubbles will stretch, which would be realistic, except, you know, they probably re... They put themselves back into their original position. Um, eventually, but they would stretch initially. 
Um, back before we had cell phones, you'd spend plenty of time playing with the soap bottle when you were in the bathroom, just being like, ooh, play with this up and down, spinning around. Um, you needed something to read. Um, so yeah, soap bubbles would stretch. So, you know, that's working. It, it sucks that we had to bake everything down a little bit just because, you know, I like being able to change the mesh later if need be. Um, but yeah, there's some bubbles being distributed through there. Um, now we do have, I'm trying to think of other things. Well, I'm trying to think of other, I mean, there's a whole entire different approaches. There's entirely different approaches that we could be doing. Um, that would be fun. Remember all the candle stuff we were doing? I wonder if there's something along those lines. I kind of would like to explore it. I mean, how are we doing that time? Eh, we didn't spend that much time on this one. So I want to try exploring a completely different variant on here. So uh, we'll rename this one C. It'll be the baked one. This one's baked down. Uh, I'm keeping a, an idea on the comments or an eye on the comments a little bit, but I try not to address it too much to keep the flow going a little bit smoother, but thank you, everybody. I appreciate, I appreciate the love. Um, so, okay. Um, so let's push this, see if we can push this concept a little bit further. I'm not sure what we need and what we don't need, but critical, I'm going to create a cloner and the sphere and we'll make incredibly low. I'm going to turn to a triangle. And we'll make it very, I'm going to go as low as it can go. Very, very low poly count. Uh, I'm going to keep everything relatively large. Um, the honey, we can, it's not going to be high fidelity. Once again, we're doing this in real time in a live stream. Uh, it's currently per step. So let's go and make a couple of copies here. So here's the thought here is, um, what's the radius on that? 80. So we'll do a radius of 90, 90, 90. Oh, I guess it's got to be double that times two, 90 times two, 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 two. There, just a little bit of space in between them. Now here is the thought. We will shall add simulation, rigid body. Once again, um, I want, actually typically I like putting, oh, I'll leave it here. I'm gonna change the shape to be ellipsoid. So they're being treated, calculated as perfect spheres, which should make it calculate nice and quick or as quick as they can. And let's save this as a new version, ABC D. And this will be um, spheres. Oh no, that's, yeah. So it's gonna be number D, but it's gonna be the uh, sphere. That's fine. It's the sphere version. So uh, they should run nice and fast. I should be able to play. Boom. Like we're getting nice calculations here. They're all moving around, rotating. Uh, we need a little bit of, uh, in spite of them being super low poly, they're still spheres and they're perfectly landing up on top of each other. So uh, we need a little bit of chaos in there so they know which way to rotate. So that's always a good idea. Random. Uh, and rotation doesn't matter, but even just like a five by five by five positional thing. I think they'll make it so they won't stack on top of each other so much. They immediately, they start cascading away. Now we're going to use the awesome dynamics force. And this dynamic force, you can think of it like particle attract or like a particle on particle attraction type of thing. And this makes all dynamic objects attracted to all other dynamic objects. And all that matters is the radius and the strength. So if I hit play right now, we might see a little bit, actually more than I thought we would. Um, you see all those suddenly got attracted to each other and they're all kind of forming this nice big clump. So, okay, excellent. Um, lots of things we need to change. Let's get rid of all the bounce and also all the friction. I want them to freely be able to pass by each other. So that is working nicely. And already you can see them starting to kind of drip down a little bit. So um, strength of one is kind of Crazy. I didn't think. Oh, it's respecting mass. Is that a default checkbox that's not normally on? I say yes. Perhaps the mass is a variable here. Um, so let's start lowering the strength here. I'm going to say 0.1. Does it fall apart at 0.1? Okay. Barely is even attracted at 0.1. So let's do five. So it's a halfway point. Is that enough for them to be pulled in, but they can still kind of fall? Yes. Okay. Nice. That, see right there where it's kind of stuck a little bit? That's kind of what I'm going for. But you know what? Let's uh, actually leave the strength really high. 
So it's stuck like that, but I'm going to start shrinking the radius. The, uh, I always kind of forget, but we have a radius of about 80. So it, you, you would think that we could say, oh, anything that is within 90. So like just barely bigger than it, but it's actually going to completely destroy this entire thing. I'm going to make them a lot more attracted to each other, but in that very small range. So you would think that that would work, but you actually have to increase it to reach the center of mass in the other one. So typically it would be to double it. So I'm going to say times two. And there's a big difference between inner and outer fall off here. So I'm going to make sure that they both have a little bit of strength. Now, yeah, even that wasn't quite enough to give them the space to be terribly attracted to each other. So we're going to keep on increasing that. Okay, that's enough for them finally to be pulled in. But the idea here is I kind of would like them to start forming these longer chains. So they start getting, like it can maybe fall down this hole, but it's going to want to stay connected. It's, it's a delicate balance. Um of figuring out the exact radius and uh, let's see, I'm going to turn off in the dynamics. I'm going to turn off deactivation. So they're always dynamic. So I can kind of turn the settings out. Okay. That's starting to work a little bit better. I'm fine with that kind of falling away. Keep in mind, we're working on a very large, um, these are very large particles. Think of them right now, the way we're using them, think of them like particles. Um, and now that they're not going to turn off, I can start like changing some of the things like the radius and maybe see them start to, uh, okay, right there. We suddenly seem to have crossed the threshold where I guess 180 was maybe the magic number there. Um, so we might need to stay above that number. Yeah. So I'm going to keep on increasing. Yeah, okay, that's starting to do kind of... Oh, there we go. Nice. Okay, so what we started doing is I'm trying to find it so that essentially one one of these particles is very attracted to its direct neighbors, but not beyond that. So then you could maybe start forming these little chains where they start interlinking a little bit. Um, now, this is actually running quite quickly. I mean, it drops down to about 30, but I think we, we can put more in here. The problem is that the ratios matter. I wonder if we can shrink them simultaneously. So right now we have a radius of 55. If I... Hit, T for scale and start scaling the entire thing down. And then I go down to 75%. Did that also scale down? It did. So let's see if it maintained that ratio. Um, well, something seems to have changed because I didn't quite like that. So well, I guess we'll just have to play around. Actually, it changed the strength. Um, we don't want... That's interesting that the strength scales because we actually don't want the strength to scale. We want the uh, radius. And the radius did, but it seems to have been enough to have had a heavy effect on it. So... We just gotta, we just gotta find the magic number. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. It kind of dripped away a little bit there. Um, okay, so this seems okay-ish. We might, we'll probably tweak it a few more times. But now it's still running pretty quick. So we'll create a couple of extra clones here. Yeah, keep in mind that it's multiplying these three numbers. So increasing even just one of them a little bit is going to eat a lot of speed. We're currently kind of still in real time, which is pretty good. So now we got these going down, and you see, actually that's doing a great job of kind of like. Some of these break away quickly, but some of them are like really holding on and it's like really pulling more of it down. So like right there, you can see it's kind of pulling everything. So I like that. Uh, more frames, please. Now, um, the next step here. Hmm. The next step. How do we do this? Because uh, what I'm thinking is we, we want the bubbles in there as well. But the bubbles are going to have to be their own cloner. So let's create a copy of this and the spheres are going to be really tiny. Now they're all currently intersecting all the current ones. So I'm going to move the second cloner. Um, oops, don't make them wider. Scoot it here. There we go. So something like that. And they're really tiny right now. I'm going to scoot it up a little bit. I don't know. It's going to be tricky, but the radius is a little small right now, T for scale. I'm going to let these be relatively large. You see, we get these bigger ones. Um, or, you know, th these are the smaller ones. We can hopefully vis visibly see them. And let's make it more obvious in the viewport. We can make those glow. And potentially, we could even make those nice. Um, now, the idea is those are also going to be attracted. And they're going to be kind of stuck in the big clump. So let's, let's see what that does. I'm going to save it. Now, I did double the particles, but... Yeah, now you can see we got all these little individual ones and they're kind of stuck in the clump and they'll all, you know, be attracted and be bouncing around inside there. So, you know, they're now integrated into this overall shape um, in a more kind of interesting and dynamic way. And they do get trapped in between them and whatnot. So, okay, this, just throwing those in worked pretty well. 
Now, let's see how well we can blob these together. And of course, you knew this was coming. We're going to put them into a volume builder. Put uh, put the entire cloner into a volume builder. You can see, boom, we get this big blob. The uh, it's you know because of the resolution we're at, we actually can be increasing our voxel size quite a bit. So this should this does not need to be very high resolution based on what we're doing. So even something like that is not bad. And on top of this, we shall create um, some dilating, which means we're going to inflate it. And now we're going to let it blob bigger. And it's going to be a little easier to see this if we put the volume builder into a volume mesher. So I'm going to hold down Alt as I create a volume mesher. And now you see, boom, the final blob. Now we are very distinctly seeing the shape here. As they blob together, we'll see that less. Um, and because this honey, it, it, this is like the candle, it, I don't think it has to be as accurate as a candle. It, it, this being a little more blobby is more acceptable. Um, but we still have to find that balance. So we could, you know, as we increase the resolution, they will just kind of melt into each other a little bit. But you got to be careful not to, you know, not to lose it too much. And of course, now we are also inflating them. And then, of course, the final step would be to put a smooth. But we all know that the smoothing um, takes a big toll on your calculation time. And it really kind of obliterates the details. So I'm just going to see if we can blob that in just a little bit like that. It's not too bad. Uh, currently ignoring the spheres now. There's a good chance that's really going to take its time calculating. Um, actually it's not bad. Oh yeah. Our voxel size is not like we didn't make the voxels so big. So it's actually calculating incredibly well. Um, and now you can see that, you know, like we're getting some nice blobbiness in here. Now we're at, the, at our low resolution, it's going to like pass straight through some of this honeycomb. We'd have to super crank up the resolution, but you now see that our individual, individual spheres should be turning into these nice, big, gooey, drippy, blah, boom, that let go of that drip. And then it's going to return and then boom, that one falls away. Uh, it's a little twitchy, but let's, uh, let's keep pushing it a little bit further. So let's see if we can integrate our, how would I want to integrate those? Honestly, um, let's put the material up here. So it turns into a big old blob of honey. The original geometry should have disappeared. Actually, I'm not sure that it does. So let's hide it. Oop, that's the honeycomb. Um, naming things as good bubbles. And then this one is a child, so it would have hidden it. Now the uh, bubbles, honestly, I think they just kind of become part of the same mesh. Like we could put them in the volume builder. We totally could and subtract the shape, but I feel like that's a lot of unnecessary calculation that is not necessarily needed. So my thought here is to make a connect object. So it's going to be like, oh, it's become one object. I'm going to say, don't weld because that slows everything down a lot. Put both of our volume mesher and our bubbles into one shape and then put one master material on top of it. So those kind of become subtractions inside of it or they're all added together. So those are volumes inside. Now we have to ignore it here in the beginning. And of course, we're not going to see the refraction live in the viewport. But if we, I guess we haven't done any this, anything destructively. So I'm just going to say that if I hit render, you can now see that those are inside behave, behaving as hollow voids inside of it. Now, you know, this, we did not make a very accurate uh, honey material. It's not, uh, it is refractive, but it's not, uh, let's change it to oil. It's probably going to be kind of the closest to honey. And then uh, a lot of this would probably be absorption distance, not a straight up color. Um, and then we'd probably want it to be blurry. This is, these are all, you know, you're going to increase your render time. So a little bit orange, a little bit goes a long way. Render. Um, and then the absorption distance that could probably be darker and less saturated a little goes a long way yeah the darkness goes a long way brighter darker um having an hdr in here would probably be a good idea just for the sake of saving time and we're just we're keeping this vanilla so i'm not going to go into redshift um, well, I say vanilla, but we're going to pull an HDR. And of course my HDRs are the HDRs and the tool to help build. So I'm going to use HDR studio. Oh, I didn't, uh, remote into the pack folder here. So give me a moment, change directory. I'm doing it in the other screen just cause I'm not sure what file paths I'm going to be traveling through. Don't need secret plugins showing up before it's time. Um, let's see Dropbox. And then in here, 
and then in here, and then in here, and then there. Boom. Ha ha! Now I got my HDRs. Um, yeah, we can even use some of these straightforward ones. So just heck, even Studio Basic too, probably. Oh, whoopsie. Oh, <laughs> when uh, I had put the packs together, I'd accidentally messed up something in the HDRI Studio and I have not copied the new one over yet. So I have the browser, but not that. Whoops. Um, think a dink a doo. Ah, I, I guess if I included the HDR, then I couldn't say put it in the file and share it. So that's less of a thing. It just won't look as pretty in the viewport. Um, I mean, I don't have the content browser. I'm just trying to think of an easy, free HDR I could use. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, let's let this actually, let's just hit play and let it blob a little bit. I want to see like once these get attracted in, my hope is that they get pulled in and now they're inside of the surface and we're not going to really see, like I said, we're not going to see them in the viewport, but now that they've been pulled inside, they're trapped inside of that structure. So you get your bubbles. They're going to stay spherical. So I guess they won't stretch. Um, there might be ways of building a rig. So they do stretch, but as we let this blob, then those should hopefully be relatively well distributed. And we got a very low poly, quick to render, or you know, quick to play back in the uh, in the viewport uh, system that we could kind of be creating some bubbles inside, and it will travel along with the liquid we got. Blurp. Yeah, you get some bubbles inside. And I mean, it's all it's all live, so we can grab that. And um, the bubbles are already sphere, but we could increase the poly count on those. So those will become a little rounder. I think they maybe you know, spheres are weird because you have to hit the, there we go. So there's a lot rounder. We could put a randomize on that and they'd be different random shapes. And then I wonder, um, I'm trying to think of the way I would actually make honey in the old style. I mean, is the absorption just not enough? Do we need to start dropping that? Like not so dark. Yeah, there we go. So as we start pulling this down, it's going to become thicker and we have to be very careful on how much of that orange we put in because that's really going to influence it. And then this darkness goes a really long way. Yeah, there we go. That's starting to look a little more delicious. Um, yeah, and as soon as those as soon as those, those meshes merge through through the connect, then you get the uh, get the bubble effect. Yeah, I think that's working pretty well. Neat. Um, I mean, we could keep going, going, and going on it, but uh, I think we'll tackle some more questions. I'm relatively happy with where that went. And even here, you're like, oh, it's so cool because when this tears off, those will actually travel with it. Like those are going to be trapped inside of there. Um, and they're, they're so light and the, the mass is being respected. So they're going to be attracted to the big ones. So they should always be kind of really, really stuck to those. Um, so I will give that one a final save. But yeah, I'm quite happy with the uh, place where that one ended up. I think all of the uh, concepts were sound. Uh, uh, Logan, thanks. Uh, and a... B's C4D Live was really fun. Um, and if anybody didn't get a chance to check out that presentation, it was all about crazy ragdolls and building them in cinema and having control and using all your dynamic forces on them. So I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, but, but, um, let's see. There's no new, I didn't see any new questions pop up on YouTube. So back to Twitch where there's lots coming through. Uh, Trey has a link um, about a real life object. Um, let's see, you got a whole thing here, but it's like, I had a super clean cube, no added segments and just, you booled out what you needed and it became a hideous mesh, a uh, mess, um, hide new edges, create single object. So essentially it's a bool, like, oh yeah, build, let's see what the shape is. Okay. Oh, game cube. Okay. Um, let's pull this on the right, correct screen. So it's just an image of a game cube. And if we were going to try and start building out this mesh a little bit, how would we interact with the bulls? Now I've actually been dealing with bulls a lot lately because a lot of those robots I've been modeling lately have been using heavily dependent on um, bulls. Uh, I guess I was bumping into a couple weird things. I wasn't sure if it was a S22 issue or not, but let's go ahead and just, um, try and rough out some of the shapes that we might boolean out of here. I mean, which are quite a few, honestly. So 
Um, there'd be a Boolean cut here, a big hole there. Those would be big bites out of it. This could, depending on if this is a different shape, that would be an entire bite or at least a line chopped out. If you got some cylinders cut out, we're not going to model this entire thing, but conceptually, let's look at a few things. First of all, um, if we're going to cut that shape out of the top, let's just say that we're leaving the overall geometry. I don't know what it looks like in the back, so we're going to leave this super rough, but, um, and it would be handy to keep that. It's mostly just square. So I'm going to create a rectangle shape, lay it flat on the ground, T for scale, scoot it up, and we can even go above there significantly. T for scale. There we go. Something about that. Intentionally overshoot the edge. Make this editable. Select our two edges. Scoot it over here. And um, I'm. what's the best way to do this? Uh, I'm going to hit US, which will subdivide right there. I've got this one subdivision. And then I'm going to say I want a soft interpolation. And that's going to soften that up. And I can pull this shape up. And we can even hit T for scale and round that a little bit so we get this nice rounded shape. All right, excellent. Now that we have that, I want to take that bite out of it, but the bite is another rectangle. So create a second rectangle, T for scale, approximate the size, sweep, and let's sweep that shape. It's going to be super crazy in the beginning, T for scale, really shrink that down. We can turn on SSAO so we can get some little shadows, which really pop out stuff while you're modeling. Now this should be shrunk down even more and let's give it more height. And I'm even going to go a little overboard on the height and you see we've got now got that shape. Now, if I look at the geometry, it's incredibly low poly, which is good, but we've got our cube and we're going to Boolean. We're going to be doing a whole series, a whole series of Booleans out of it. So we're going to do the first bool, hold down alt, it'll create it as a parent. And I want to take a subtract B is the default. So boom, you can see we got that and it's super clean, even by default very clean shape. It took the bite out. And that's because by default, they turned on hide new edges, which didn't used to be there. But let's continue taking some shapes out of it. Now, something to keep in mind is if shapes are not overlapping each other, and I guess these were, <laughs> these are supposed to be uh, extra shapes there. But you know what? Actually, we can do that. Why not do a little bit of modeling? It's fun. Um, we have this rectangle shape. I'm going to hold down shift as I create a end side, and it's actually going to create it. Oh, Oh, sh not shift. Uh, what is it? Control. Inside. Yeah. So that creates a new one in the same level of the hierarchy of it. And it should take on its uh, position. Is that accurate? It seems to be. So um, uh, I guess it's dangerous to do that in blank. But I'm going to pull these two shapes out. And um, did I move that? I did move. I thought that took on the attribute. Maybe I should have just make a child. Undo, undo. Um, oh, oh, sorry. I'm going to undo a few times. Uh, strike that, reverse it. Okay, I, I was supposed to be doing on this rectangle, not that one. It's confusing me. So going back, there's our sweep. I want to put some additional shapes in it. So I'm going to hold down Control as I create a end side, and you're going to see it's going to create an end side in that exact same 0, 0, 0 location. So if I lay that flat on the ground, um, we, we're going to have to turn off our suite so we can see if I can hit T for scale and let's move this onto the corner. If we want to get shift S to turn on snapping and snap to the point, shrink that down a wee little bit, give this a bunch of segments, let's say 36 and take a look and yeah, it's out of the corner, out of the corner. So this becomes a spine mask. If I hold down alt, it'll automatically make a parent out of the spine mask. And now I can feed these in and I can say, a union B, nope, A subtract B, nope. Actually, it's being a little bit weird. So let's pull it out of the hierarchy and check out what we're getting from here. A subtract B, A or B. Why is that curving like that? Is the spline mask not along the right axis? Yeah, sorry, is the spline mask was not along the correct axis. So A subtract B, that is what we wanted. So that's A subtract B. And I can make a, actually this kind of, I can, um, can we group it? Yeah, I can, I can group that and I'm going to make a second copy of the inside and move it. And I think snapping's still on. So boom, it'll snap to that corner and I've got that equivalent one. And as long as these are not touching each other, I can just make copies in the null and it's going to take the bite, the bite, the bite, the bite out of it. And now when we put that back into the sweep, it's uh, that sweeps along B. So now we get this shape, turn this on, and now we get that swept out a little bit more accurately there. Now, continuing on this theme, the a, a one bool can actually do a lot of work because if you're adding additional shapes that are not 
that are not overlapping each other in any way, you can keep using the same bool. Now, this is getting a little dangerous, so we should probably save it for A. And we'll just go bool modeling. Uh, okay, so now uh, we want those buttons. So we'd have to take bytes out where those buttons would be. So I'm just going to eyeball. I'm going to hit E. Um, or T for scale, just arbitrarily scale down. But let's hit E for move. And once again, we're snapping. So I should be able to still snap to that same point right there. I think that was correct. There we go. Scale that down. And yeah, we snapped to the correct spot. We don't need these extra vertical cuts, but we do want more segments going around. So I'll do this another 36 cuts. It's just a nice kind of clean number. And I'll drop. Now we've got the sweep, which is taking a bite out. I'm going to hit Alt-G and make a group out of that. And let's put this in as well. And you'll see, boom, that takes a bite out of that as well. Make a duplicate of this. And uh, I guess there's probably still this thing we can snap to right there. Boom. Yep, we can. And we can even do a third one. And snap. Oh, I, that, that one won't snap. Um, so I should just drag this over. I'll just eyeball. Oh, I'm going to turn off snapping. At, uh, shift or con shift S is a shortcut for that. Scoot this over. I'm just going to eyeball it, but that's pretty much right there. Uh, if you want to go further, these could actually be instances of a master one. That way, if you changed one, you'd change all three. But um, that's fine. Copy and paste. And now those uh, became the whole. So now we could make copies that are outside of that and just shrink these up, move them down as if they're the buttons. And now those got booled out. And now you get your secondary buttons on the outside. And now those shapes are there. So, and, and, Look, I mean, this is an entirely parametric shape, except for that one little edit we made in the rectangle. And we could have done a deformer to change that, but not not necessary. Um, so maybe shrink those up a little bit more. I'm not sure uh, how much we want to go in there. But uh, keeping everything very clean, we can make all sorts of changes all over the place if need be. But um, let's push things a little bit further. It looks like that was one piece of molded plastic, and then that is a separate piece of molded plastic. So I would just keep this as one shape and do another bool. Although it, this does not intersect with anything, so we could keep it as another single shape. Just make another cube and uh, make it really thin. And I'll also add this into the same bool. And I can just scoot that down to where I, where I want. I'm going to NB, and you can see that our geometry is still incredibly clean. Now we have that bite. Uh, what's nice about the shape is all none of these are intersecting each other, so we can just keep on booling things. Um, so I'll create another rectangle. Um, cloner once i'm not trying to literally make this model but just see where the different challenges are in it so i'm not going to i'm not going to take measurements here or try and be super accurate or even do a count but there's kind of our grid shape and we need i don't know how many there were but there we go that's fine we'll do three by five it's way too big so i'm just got t for scale scoot these in move them to location i know that's not the correct count but that is not the point here something like that and I think those actually went pretty deep. So we'll do something like that. Once again, this is not interacting in any way with those other shapes. So we can just add this to that one bool and those get a bite taken out of it. Um, now, uh, and there's even more, there's that additional shape here. Now this one's actually a little more complicated because I think that that hole would have to go up to this one. So that becomes one shape. So this is actually our first use of our second bool, which is actually this, this cut that we did actually wants to be a bigger cut. It should be more of a complicated shape. Now we could just make this editable or you can put it into a second bool. So it's just kind of a stylistic choice. Um, I guess there's no reason that we couldn't just do it here. So I'm going to pull that temporarily, pull this out, make it editable. Actually, before we make it editable, let's add a couple segments. Um, I'll scoot it up. Uh, let's add a two segments on X and one on Z. There we go. Make this editable. Hit UL and hit T for scale. I'm going to make that pretty wide. And then we can go to our edge mode, UL, and scoot this. I don't know how far back that molding goes. I, I guess it doesn't even really matter, but we can just do something like this. And now we have the space we need to do a D extrude right there for that big bite out of the front that would be in that piece. And uh, I guess before we put it in the bool, let's scoot it into approximately the correct location. Drop it into the null. And now it's going to take that bite out of it. And if we were inclined, I could even copy paste this piece, which has this nice big fat polygon for us. So that's a completely separate one. Um, I copy and paste it. Now with this polygon selected, hit UI, delete everything else. We just have the single polygon. And now we could move that into position. And you know, you'd probably want a little bit of spacing. I'm just going to 
hit T for scale and just you know shrink it a tiny little bit. It's probably not the best way to do it, but D for extrude, pull that out a little bit. And then based on that overall shape, we can, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could uh, deform that nice little curve there. The way I would, how would I want to do that? Um, Uh, maybe I would do a little bit of an extrude and then we can do a bunch of subdivisions M F for subdivide, hit apply, hit apply. There we go. And make a bunch of cuts and I don't, I don't know if this is going to work, uh, but I'm gonna hold down shift as I create a FFD. And you see it automatically got applied to the proper spot as a child and adapted its scale, which is very nice. So uh, we want this to have no subdivision there, no subdivision there, but one extra one on Y. And now we can grab just that one and just that one. And I think if we pull this, yes, look at that. Look at that nice curve we get from that. Beautiful. Um, so that was a very simple shape to put together. And yeah, so you see that's going to match the hole, but we did take it completely out from that mold. Um, is there any other shapes that we should tackle? Um, I mean, you, you know, it, it just keeps going where there's these, uh, like those bites will be more complicated, but once again, or I, I'm sorry, those bites will not be any more complicated. Um, in fact, when it comes to that kind of thing, it's not unusual for me to like go overboard and use something like a cloner again. So we've got the... Uh, we got this nice cube cloner, but it's doing a good job for us. So let's just make there be one stack, two wide. And now you see I've got those. T for scale, approximately get to the right size, grab the cloner, go to object mode, make that as wide as we need to, scoot it to approximately the right location. And then that becomes the bytes that we can take out of those. Just another thing in the null. Boom, those bytes come out and then you know, copy and paste and those become the model that could eat up the space. These will intersect a little bit, but you know, we'll just do that. Now you get your little line on the outside. We also could have done that same spline on, you know, spline trick where you take a, a little sideways bite out of it. So like kind of two different ways of doing the same thing. Um, and then, I mean, just to pool, I mean, once again, we've only used one bool for this entire thing. I don't know if you'd have to use more than one bool. I mean, you have to make a second bool for this shape because um, that does have like these little controller ports out of it. Um, the... Uh, but just to show you how robust the bool is, as long as the default, I mean, it didn't used to be the default. I used to hate cinema bools and they can still be quirky and you cannot use them for animation. But as soon as you turn on in a bool, the uh, hide new edges, it creates everything as end gons and your geometry continues to stay incredibly clean. And uh, let's just throw on, so we've got some text up here. Let's go ahead and just do that and see if how well that, that if, how well it works. I don't know how well it will work. So um, we'll create a mo text. That way we have a volume instantly. Lie it flat on its back there. Um, yeah, we'll just do the text. We could outline it, but I don't think it's necessary. T for scale. Let's go ahead and do rocket lasso live. Boom. That should be a nice beefy font. Uh, where's our official Rocket Lasso font of Futura? Futura Bold. There we go. That's very nice. Shrink. Now, especially with this being this tiny, there's way too much geometry in there that is not needed. So we'll just move that carefully in the position, let it intersect a little bit. And you can see all these subdivisions that we don't need. I mean, it's pretty clean overall, but we don't need that much. So I can go into our angle and jump that up to 15 or 25, depending on how far away. You see at that level, it's like a lot fewer polygons are being generated for the curves. Um, and depending on how far away you are, that could be completely not needed. And you can jump that up pretty dang high. We can go up to uh, 45, 45 on that. I mean, you know, and just keep, actually there's going to be a little bit of a minimum on that. Maybe it's, actually I'm surprised there's a minimum on that. Seems like we kind of clamp out there. We could change this to be a different type, but I do feel like that's probably our best bet. Um, so uh, I hit save just because it's a little bit more of a dangerous one, but it's not interacting with anything else. So I'm pretty sure we could just drop this in the same null and boom, instantly it took that bite out of it. And once again, this is where see, I'm, I'm in polygon mode. You can see that there's no extra edges generated and it's running incredibly fast. It's really, really nice actually. Um, let's put a nice little rounded outline on there because it's fine. I'm going to pull it out just so we can make changes without 
I don't want to intersect the text. That'd be a little bit dangerous. So I'm gonna hold down Alt. Actually, no, I'm gonna hold down Control as I create a rectangle. That's gonna be way too big, but I can hit T for scale. And there we go. We can now see it. I'm gonna make it about the right width. Scoot it up. Go to about the center. Make it wider. Turn on rounding. I'm going to maximize the rounding. That can actually be a little bit dangerous. Like when these two points are overlapping each other, I kind of feel like they might have changed that, but I'm not, I haven't tested it. I'm not sure. Um, but typically, I like to pull it back just a little bit from there so they're not quite touching. So the rounding isn't maxing, it out, ma <clears throat> maxing itself out. Uh, in fact, I'll just pull it up a little bit. And um, let's see. That'll become another sweep. Hold down Alt. It'll become apparent. Rectangle, put that in. It's going to be a huge rectangle. Set that to one by one. Oh, okay. One by one is pretty good. The rounding, we don't need that many subdivisions. Don't have the 25. And once again, nothing is touching anything else. So those can both be dropped in. And now you can see we get that change. Something that's kind of neat is um, the color that comes in from the object being booled is what the color is overall. So we could do something like, I think this works. We can apply an overall material up there. Would use that uh, nice midnight blue I've been loving so much instead. A little bit lighter one, perhaps. And then let's say these holes are are done up in a slightly different color. If you want heavy contrast, we can go and pull a nice light blue. And I think if we apply this material to that text specifically, yeah, you see that that is now being applied in that specific spot. So it's kind of automatically creating the selection tags for you. So you can make that kind of stuff pop out. Um, by just applying the materials to the proper spot. And if, I don't know for sure, but if we made a third material, um, let's make kind of a aquamarine, a light aquamarine. And on the text, if we were to put this on the text and put this on a cap, let's try C1, but it might be C2. Actually, is it lowercase C1? Let's try C2. Oh, no. Um... I'm not sure if the caps work that way anymore. They might have changed things. Like caps might get... Because ever since they changed the way these caps are, I'm not sure if that's, a, if that's a thing. I'm not sure how to apply that. But I thought we could maybe have applied a different material to one side or the other. But maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, definitely apply different materials based on just the polygon selections. Um, and yeah, you see the bool just isn't having a problem with us at any point through this entire thing. And it's just a nice clean workflow. And then even with all this, with the one bool doing all this work at the end, I think because everything's so clean, I should be able to hit alt G Ooh, uh, alt G. Yeah. Uh, group that. And you gotta be careful with this, but I'm going to create a bevel, but you see, I didn't hold down shift or alt to make it part of the hierarchy because I immediately want to make sure that we're using angle, which we are, uh, I'm going to turn on limit, and actually the offset's pretty small already. I'm going to set the 0.5 just to be sure. And, I, and I'm going to be careful here because actually it's going to bevel the text, and we probably don't want it beveling the text. So I guess actually for this purpose, so what that would do is I would actually pull this text and the outline out. I don't want those beveled. So we could take those, pull them out of that bool. We won't worry about them quite yet. But now, actually we'll pull them entirely out. And now in that nice null that we made, we can drop our bevel inside and it's going to bevel the bool that we had. And because of all that very nice clean geometry you're working with, you can see that it's actually doing a very nice job of beveling. Actually, it's beveling some of the corners, but not all of them. You can see that these ones don't look quite right. And these don't look right because they're not welded together. And that's because the bool is not creating a single object. So let's turn on create single object. Hopefully it doesn't break everything sometimes. Yeah, there can be trouble, but okay. Now it's creating a single object. And now you can see that we've got a nice bevel on every single edge. And I mean, just look at, just look at, let's hit NA and look at the, here's a perfect example of how incredibly important uh, bevels are. If I turn off that bevel, it's like, okay, cool. We got our shape, but even here, like, let me intentionally try and break this. I'm going to go to an angle. You see how we can see this different sides, like light, medium, dark. If I pivot my camera to the proper spot, they're all pretty much going to become the exact same color. And you see, we can't distinguish between the three different sides because it's so similar. But as soon as you turn on this bevel, boom, it can catch highlights and everything gets distinguished from each other. And that will go even further on the bevel if we uh, give it a couple subdivisions, because right now it's a hard edge, which is really nice. It's really nice to be able to do this hard edge bevel. Um, but if you want it to start looking even smoother, then we can just start adding a few subdivisions. You don't need too many, so we'll do two more subdivisions on there. But now you get the curve of that subdivision and 
and you see it really makes it pop. Now, uh, you can break your fong tags if you're not careful. You can see that um, it's trying to do a smooth fong curve from one to the other, and it starts exposing some of these end gons that are underneath. Uh, I think if we say break fong at the rounding, let's try also breaking at the miter. Yeah, okay, so I broke at the rounding at the miter, and that fixed that problem. So that's one kind of fong zone and that's another one so that breaks those apart now you get this nice beautiful beveling everywhere uh if i hit nb you can see everything is still end gone so everything is pretty much clean perfect geometry everywhere um and keep in mind what a freaking parametric setup we have here we've barely made anything editable so at any even point we can make any change that we need to if these holes were not big enough then we can change that if this cut wasn't deep enough if these holes if the if you know, if those were supposed to be rounded, like at any point I can go back to, I think it's this one. Yeah, I can go to this one. Let's turn on a fillet for rounding. I'm going to make it one. Let's increase that radius. Now we can, you can see I can change this shape and now those get these nice little hexes in between. And it's going to bevel the back. And yeah, uh, like yeah, we can go back and change all these shapes and it should just update and continue to work pretty cleanly. Um, and, you know, like things like Fong, you got to be careful with Fong tags and there's different areas that can break there. And then uh, our text, we didn't want that to get beveled. So now that we've got this end result, I can take that entire thing, hold down Alt, make a second bool. And that's, you know, A subtract B. So we can subtract B. In this case, it would be the text. And now I hit Alt G, group. I guess I don't want the group actually at that place, but whatever. Um, we'll also put the sweep in that one. So those two get booled out, but not, not getting beveled because we broke that out into a separate piece. And you can just keep on layering and layering up the different parts. Um, like uh, there's that one shape here that you can see we've got this little molded piece there. I don't know if that'd be a separate piece of plastic or if it would be part of that same initial mold, but um, we can fix that immediately by going into any one of these shapes. We can even say go to, we can add it after the fact, but we could also grab our original cube right here and I'm going to hold down Alt as I create a, let's save this. I'm going to hold down Alt as I create a new bool. So it becomes a, a parent of it. Uh, create a cylinder. Uh, no height segments. Uh, 36 rotational segments. It's bigger, so I might make there be more. But actually, the radius isn't too bad by default. Let's we'll scoot this down. Let that pass through. Let's see. I'll increase the radius. Make it a little thinner. Scoot it back. There we go. Something kind of like that. Then you can see that we're actually losing a lot of our geometry from that just because it's not that big of a sliver. So um, you have to make a stylistic choice on how much time you want to take to calculate. One thing we could do is just start increasing this. We could jump this up to a, like a whole bunch more subdivisions. But of course, there's a lot of redundant ones there and the bool has to calculate more. So an alternative would be we can go into our slice and turn on a slice and scoot the slice to be just barely beginning there, just barely going there. And now there's not so much redundant geometry. Um, and now, yeah, so now we've got this bool. Actually, no, this is an inner bool. So we got this bool here. And I want to make sure that this bool is actually a, it's a union of A plus B. So uh, save it. And then I'll drag this in as well. So A plus B, those two get merged together. And now they've been booled into each other. Now it, at the stage I did that, it is still trying to bevel. And you can see it is beveling these, but based on the threshold of a bevel that we gave it, it's actually trying to bevel these together, but not that edge. And that can maybe create a little bit of a weird, potentially there's some weirdness there, but I'm not going to get too much, go too much into detail on that. Um, but yeah, we're definitely getting a couple little flung issues and the way these are intersecting, those can get a little bit weird. I mean, I, I, it's dangerous to start making changes after a fact, because you see some, some of the bevel is getting a little bit weird right there. So we turn it off and see what the result of that is. And that actually, that looks okay right there. We turn it on and it gets weird because maybe these extra shapes are these, these are those 45 degree angles. So we could limit this more. So um, th this is actually making it so that it's, it's looking at for a lower threshold. So now you can see that one bevels. It's maybe a little bit cleaner there, but those aren't working. So we could increase this beyond the 45. And now those inner ones are not getting beveled. And now you see that cleaned this up. So depending on what's going on there. Um, now here's the thing that's actually, I'm not too worried about it here, but something that is throwing me off is that the, it seems like the bevel does acknowledge the end gun. I wonder if there's a way to fix that. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about it now, but it's something I'm, I'm in the middle of investigating is you see, we still get these subdivisions and those subdivisions are happening where the end gons are intersecting and it's still doing a good job, but 
it does create a lot of extra geometry. And, and you have to, when you make it editable, you'd have to start cleaning those things up. Um, and something we did broke some of the fog again, but um, some of that could just be the level of the fog that we're feeding through the object. The original cube has its own fog tag, and that threshold actually can be relevant to, um, I guess in this case, it's not. Um, and then uh, you get your final thing, which could be we grab our entire final object, put the entire thing into a connect, turn off weld. And if we set it to manual, then now we can control the bevel just based directly on whatever we feed here. So if we make a relatively low threshold, then it's going to automatically fix. Well, it didn't fix that one. Um, either the threshold's not. Oh, okay. I, I just didn't have a low enough threshold. So this I jumped this to 11 and now it broke it. We got also break fong ed edges more. Actually, create fong edges at intersection would probably be a good idea. That might have automatically fixed a bunch of them. Um, but yeah, I've been doing so much of this type of modeling um, lately. Like everything's been modeled by doing very simple forms and then bevel you know, or bool, 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 bevel where I have to and then bake it down at the last second. Because, well, this workflow can slow you down. And you see, I was being as clean as possible. If you threw a lot of subdivisions here, it can slow down quite a bit. So you got to be careful. And I've, I've definitely gone like 10, 12 bools deep, depending on the way things add together. But it is super fun. I like it. All right, I'm going to save uh, that one. And let's jump into the chat and see if we uh, have some other questions. Uh, lots of new people hanging out. Uh, did, uh, did some people find me through the NAB presentation? I hope so. That was one of the goals. But uh, thank you, everybody, for coming and hanging out. I like it. Uh, I guess this is a good chance to mention that there is a Rocket Lasso Slack channel. You can get to it by going to rocketlassoslack.com and you can sign up through there. Uh, it's all the same people hanging out in the chats and they help each other ask and answer Cinema 4D questions. There's cool challenges and contests. Um, no prizes, just like sharing it with the community, but it's really fun. Uh, Paul put a link in Twitch. Thank you very much. Um, it's really fun. So yeah, you should come and hang out. Uh, and uh, just another mention that all the scene files and everything I'm saving here are saved on Patreon. If you want those scene files, you can join on Patreon. There's also a bonus live stream that happens on Thursdays tomorrow at the same time. And we just try and go. We don't really answer questions. It's more like we go deeper on things and try and it's, like today we were earlier. It was like, oh, like there could be a thing there. We should explore it more. But that's going to be boring to do on the live stream. But then this is more about like going deep and really meticulous and being like, oh, let's try and do a deeper honey simulation. But it's going to be more about like A, B testing. And it's it's less, there's less of a flow forward and more like, no, we're going to focus on this until it starts working. Um, but anything anything that that comes really cool from the bonus stream eventually goes out into the world. The Ragdoll presentation actually was a lot, it originally started as a question here in Rocket Lasso Live. And then in the bonus stream, we did more testing and did more testing and did more testing. It's like, okay, cool. I think I got a good idea here. And I did a lot more testing on my own, but that's one of the ideas. So, but anyway, yeah, really cool. Thank you everybody for coming and hanging out. Um, okay. So back to the questions. Um, let's try. Uh, I'm going to try a link from Travis here. Um, would love to see how to do that without displacement. Oh, you're at. Polly. Oh, that might be something for Paul. Um, oh, so it's maybe a follow-up to Paul's question. So um, let's see what Paul was asking. Uh, question, how would you create this with geometry and not displacement maps? Okay. The edges could be tricky. Whoop, the chat scrolled as soon as I clicked. Let's see what we got here. Oh, my. Is this part of those uh, clay shaders I've gotten so famous lately? Um so this is from, uh, how would you say that? Is that Augusta? Uh, it could also just be August. The English way of saying it would be August. Le F oh man, it seems like it might be French. Uh, Le Fau, Le Fou? I, I apologize for butchering your name. Uh, yeah, and there's replies in French, so I was right. It's a French name. Um, so well, let's just kind of talk through the process. Well, first of all, it looks gorgeous, like nice and simple, clean render, but it's all about this material. Now, I can't remember what it, what it is. And it's, if somebody in the chat knows, there's recently someone who made, there's somebody who made a series of clay shaders and they're selling them and they've become really popular and they're really cool. Um, I haven't played with them myself, but it could just be 
that material pack, in which case it turns into these are just really nice clay shading. Now you're saying without displacement, um, I mean, to me, the this is the obvious way to do this is displacement. It's even kind of like in real life, it's kind of like it would be displaced. As far as I can tell, these are not separate pieces. They're just kind of cracks that are happening at those individual places. If it was without displacement, then it, it really does just go to um, Voronoi fracture, which is really straightforward. Now you're saying without displacement, but I kind of, I, the direction I want to go with it is displacement. In fact, I kind of want to pop open substance designer and we can answer a question and a completely different piece of software for a little bit. Um, but let's, I don't, I haven't, I had, I was having trouble with my, uh, uh, well, my uh, operating system and all software drive that I have on my computer is very full. So I had to delete a bunch of things. Um, and I do not have the new, I don't have, I don't have any of the catalogs from cinema. And so if I can't grab one of their sculpting models, it's really going to trip us up here. Um, do, 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 um, so let's see what I do with a model. I'm not sure. Um, let's see if I, I I'm going to check actually <laughs> that's on a face. That's really cool on a face, but I wonder, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Somebody gave me, and hopefully I saved their name in here. They gave me a model, um, of a Tesla roadster. I think, let me see here. I'm checking some folders here. Uh, models. Ah, okay. Yes. So these are some models and he gave this to me and said it was cool if I ever had to use it on stream to give it away to people. So I've got this Tesla Roadster from uh, Velislav Slavov. Sorry for pronunciations again, but um, it's a very nice Tesla Roadster. There's no interior, but the, the it's very clean. The poly counts and everything are really nice. Um, uh oh. Oh dear. Um, well, uh, this uh, cinema is, doesn't seem to be responding, but the window I just dragged it from is also not responding, but I can still move out there. Oop, okay, geez Louise. I don't know why it just take up that bad, but yeah, here's the model. And let's, let's see if we can do anything with this. Now, what's nice is that these are all subdivisions and we can turn them off. So you can see we've got a nice, super clean model here and we can work from it from not being incredibly low poly. So let's uh, work from the body of this car instead of a person. We'll make it kind of a car. Um, and let's see, what do we want to do? I'm thinking, why don't we just take all of the main parts of the car here and merge them down into one model and just throw it into a Voronoi fracture? I mean, honestly, it's kind of the only, if we're not doing it with a texture, it's kind of the only way I can even think to do it. Um, now, is that all the parts I want? Yeah, I think so. So... We will just right click and connect and delete. So those have all become one. They've become one. Delete, delete. And. Okay, so we got something like that. Um, I'm not sure if these are volumes or not, but that really shouldn't matter too much with a Roanoi fracture. Not that fracture. This fracture. Boronoi fracture. Put them in. See what happens. Boom. Okay. Yeah, it's doing a fine job. Nice and clean. Nice and quick. So, um, yeah, I mean, you're still saying with no displacement. Everything about that. I, I Even doing these cuts, I'm still like, oh, and then we do the displacement. Um, but let's see what we get. So, we get sources, point distribution. That's all good. Let's do a bunch of cuts. I'm not sure how far we want to go on this, but let's do even more cuts. Um, getting there. Let's do three times as many. Boom. There you go. So you get all those kind of cuts going. That's looking pretty good. And now, of course, it's a, it's a MoGraph object. So the first thing we would potentially do, well, I'm going to make a copy of the body. So we have the original one. And now we've got this fractured version. So in this fractured version, I'm going to start by... There's two things we could do. We could give it a, some offset in here, which would be nice, but it'd be very even. If we go back to the reference... I think that some of these cracks will be very thick and some will be very thin. It's a little bit hard to tell. Um, 
So you could do that, but um, instead I'm going to do it straight up with a cloner. So let's add a random effector. It's going to explode all these pieces out. It looks like they're pretty thin. Looks like these are not a volume, so they're super thin. Uh, I don't think any of them... Do any of them have a volume? No, there's some curve on there, but there's no volume. So what we can do is grab the fracture and give it some... Is it offset? Hull only... Give us some thickness. There we go. That's what I was looking for. So how big is this model? 11. Or am I doing this wrong? Perhaps I'm doing it wrong. No, this seems all right. What's going on here? Oh, maybe some of the... <laughs> no, this... Hmm. So I'm saying hull only, but these don't have thickness, but the other these other pieces do. Um... And it could be that the mesh, first of all, I merged the mesh that shouldn't necessarily have been merged. And secondly, maybe some of it was a volume and some of it wasn't a volume. I'm going to say it's a hollow object. And then, yeah, that, that should make them more uniform. And then does giving a thickness mean anything? Okay, so that means we'll give them thickness in post. So hollow object is kind of what we want. So now at least they're all behaving the same. So with the random effector, uh, I don't want to affect the position yet, but let Let's affect the scale. And I guess we don't have to be uniform on this. Um, so I'm going to say negative 0.1. We're going to go pretty mild on these. Negative 0.1. I'm going to do negative 0.1 on all of them. So they all shrink randomly, but they're not going to shrink too much. And now we do want them to push out in all directions. So I'm going to say random scale. Rename it. And then create a second random. But what this one is going to do is position. But I don't want any of them pushing inward. So I'm going to go to the effector and I'm going to say no minimum. So there's zero. So they can only push outward, as you can see here. Only pushing out. In fact, um, in fact, they're pushing out in a pretty weird way. Maybe the fracture doesn't have much in the way of orientation. Interesting. Hmm. Well, I don't want to, I don't know dress out some of the specific details too much. Um, let's get rid of X. Let's get rid of... I'm not sure if it's Z or Y. I think it's Z. Uh-oh. Nope, it's not Z. It must be Y. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Uh, we seem to have lost our rotation? Or the fracture isn't giving these a normal... Does that make sense? I we're not getting like they don't they're not based on the normal direction, but I'm not sure if these are supposed to give you a normal direction. Uh, I need to do a test to understand. So I'm just gonna create a sphere, a fracture. We'll throw that in there. It's gonna fracture into a bunch of pieces. Subdivide a few more, please. And then if I gave this a, the same, essentially the same setup, I just need to see it more cleanly. Random, it's pushing all directions. But if I said no, no, oh yeah, it is just absolute because a fracture doesn't give direction. Mm, that makes it more challenging. Yeah, now I'm starting to get super lost for what we could do well a bunch of them are going to sink through the surface and that's why I, was, I thought we could do a rig where they don't sink through the surface but now it's kind of proving that that's not the case so we could put the negative back in and start giving these a little bit of displacement in all directions but half of them are going to sink through the surface and i really didn't want that i'm gonna hide the body um and yeah you can see that we're creating these oh yeah and some of these definitely the windshield did have thickness which is good but that's creating some weirdness on the shapes there so eh, Great model, but not a great one to throw this on. It would have been good to put down some sort of bust. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you see where I was going, which is just going to be that we'd have the body, and then I was hoping these could all just push out a little bit, and we'd give them a little bit of thickness, and then they could all be kind of just passing through to these various degrees. And in the end, if they're subdivided enough, then you get vertex maps. If I were to make this editable, you see we get vertex maps with every piece, 
let's go find this piece. And the vertex maps kind of fall off. So you could actually displace this based on like the red. So it's like, oh, it could push up a little bit based on the redness. Um, I'm kind of feeling like we're not really getting there. Yeah. We're not getting to where I want it to go. And it's got nothing to do with this car. It just goes, I mean, it just goes to like this technique isn't Ronoi fracture based. It's not, it's texture based. Like it's just built into the premise. Um, let's see. Um, but since we are using this a bunch, I will save the car for Patreon. Um, and once again, a big shout out to, I think I might've saved it. It's just in the folder. Well, another big shout out to, uh, Velislav Slavov um, for offering that to the community. A big thank you. I'm going to revert to saved and then save this. Uh, save with assets. And I do have a version of that. I was working, I did like a redshift version of it, but we'll just save this one then. Scene files. Wait, um, let me make sure I save it with his name. Boom. I'll save with assets. Oh, come on. Stop jumping to different folders. Scene files. Did I save with assets? Oh, no, save file, save with assets. Don't worry. I'll get this right eventually. And back to this folder. Scene files. Save with assets. Boom. Okay. Back to the chat. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm. Oh, well, Paul's point here is if you wanted to break it later with dynamics. Uh, Trying to think if I was like if I if I was like working for a big studio trying to like really accurately like get that as realistic as possible, how would I do it? And I still feel it would be like I would still do it with displacement, but the displacement pattern would be based off the Voronoi pattern. And that way you could break apart the parts, but then also get all the displacement and everything from those different pieces. So it would be a hybrid method. Um, but yeah, I started from not, not an appropriate model and uh, yeah, and possibly it would be a Houdini question. Um, and people are talking about links that I've kind of lost reference to. So I'm going to. Uh, uh, okay, Paul followed up with, it's kind of uh, looking for the curling of the scales. But if you're going to the curling scales, this will probably go back to the displacement. Oh, well, I, you're linking to Slack, which it doesn't like, but I do have it here in Slack, so I'll pull this over. So yeah, you're, you're talking about this kind of thing. And yeah, that's where, it, I mean, I, I, I did address that very briefly, which was that we can use, here, we can do, I can show you, I can show you um, in a simplified version here. So we'll do a icosahedron. Throw in some extra subdivisions. This will just make it cleaner because we're in a cleaner object. Bruno fracture. Break it apart. Get a few pieces. And even here, I think it still goes to, I would want this to be a shell because all those break apart as a shell. So I'm going to say hull, hollow object. And if we say hull only in this kind of situation, can we give it thickness? Yeah, I think I'm giving it thickness now. So we can give it a thickness of say two. And now I will offset the fragments by one. There we go. You now see that we have individual. So if we use a, a very hollow mesh, then this automatically, you know, you're just in a better situation to play with it overall. So now we've got this going on. So working very nicely. Um, so we'll give it a little more thickness. Nice. And just for a cleaner model, I'm going to give this more subdivisions. Something like that. Yeah. So we got something like that. And now you're talking about that curl, which I agree is very cool. So what I would do here is you've gotten to this step. 
uh, copy paste, keep a copy, make it editable. Now you get all these different pieces. I wonder if we can merge them. I wonder if we, does it, does it merge the, the fracture? Does it merge the selection tags? <gasps> Looks like it does. Nice. Look at that. Okay. So, okay. How do we, how do we do this? What I'm, I mean, you need displacement, so we'll displace, but we're going to limit the displacement. Let's give it a full on shading of colors. And I see everything goes super inflated. But now you limit it with a fall off of your vertex map. So now we can click on, let's turn that off for a moment, click on our different vertex maps. So that's the edges. Um, let's see if we can do this, which would be, I kind of want to fall off based on the edges to tell you the truth. So... How would I do that? Um, I think maybe we'll grab this original one, which we didn't destroy it. That's why we keep it, because every once in a while you need to go back to it. And on this version of it, let's hide that one. On this fracture, why is it not fracturing? Fracture, please. Hello? Fracture, please? What? Why are you not fracturing? Off. On, off, on, in, out. Uh, what? Um, that is weird. Okay, I mean, let's copy paste that. Okay, I, something just went completely screwy with the copy and paste. I. Don't know what went weird there. Uh, I'm going to ignore it. Okay, so this is now, let's say it's no longer hollow. It's not a hull only, and there's no offset. Okay, so now we have that. So then, um, selections. I want the edge, no, not the edge vertices, although that would probably work. It's, is there any way to get the I want to select the edges. Is there a select edges checkbox? I don't know. I haven't specifically done it. I guess, can we outline the faces? I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we can. Um, so I'm going to say I want to selection the outside faces. Actually, it's right there already. But yeah, if we make this editable. Nope. Let's go easy on this. Uh, once again, put into a connect, connect it, and now we get, ooh, oh, that's no, not the edges. That's the inside selection, this one. Now, can we hit U for selection types? And I'm going to say outline selection, which is, um, Q, U, Q. Oh, it's individual ones. Is there a way to automatically get all of them? I mean, I could... Go and start selecting them each individually. This is a little tedious. Um, let me think. There's got to be a better way than that. Uh, okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Um, okay, select all those polygons. I'm going to invert my selection so it's everything else. So now all we've got is the shell. Now if I... Sh go to edge mode, shrink my selection... Are they welded? They should not be welded. UW. There's got to be a way to do this in the chat. Oh, Fong Break. Well, that, no, the Fong Break's going to. Fong Break will not create outlines, but all those got welded together somehow. I'm not sure they got welded together. Oh, the connect object. Undo. Undo a million times. Undo. Okay, connect. Don't weld, please. Thank you. Now. Um, yeah, uh, somebody's saying funk selection, and the funk selection is great, and we don't use it often enough. Um, funk break selection, but that, it, all of these don't like. Yeah, I mean, this is going to allow us to select individual elements if we wanted to, but that's not creating an overall outline. Uh, we need to explode those. So, create select the outside faces. Invert my selection. Delete all of that. 
Can I select all? Actually, go to edge mode, select all, shrink. Um, no, no, no. There's a definitely a way to do this. I love these kind of tricks. If I hit shrink on polygon mode, convert to point mode, convert to, no, 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 almost. Grow, invert, yes, haha. <laughs> Um, so I, I, I might've got a little bit lost there, but I just wanted to select all those edges and not do it manually. So I did a weird thing where I selected everything, shrunk once, convert to edges, grow the edges. And now you can see the only things not selected are the edges. So I invert my selection and now I have edges selected. There might be some stragglers or maybe there's some breaks there. So maybe it's not perfect. Um, but that's fine. Shift C. These are all separate too, so they're going to be multi splines on it. Shift C, edge to spline. Wasn't there, it, it, there's got to be a way of selecting those edges. Um, there's got to be a way. Shift S, edge to spline. Not spin edge, edge to spline. Um, okay, all of that just to get this spline. So now that we got this spline, which is really cool looking. Um, I swear there must be a way. It's kind of driving me nuts. I think there's probably just like a checkbox outside vertices, edges, edge vertex map, object. There's got to be a way. There's got to be a better way. Um. Okay. Okay. So we got these edges. So now we're back to our displacement. Sorry for the long detour, but displacement. Displacement is turned on. Let's see this. We don't need that. Okay. So everything's getting inflated. Now I want this displacement to be limited to only the outside faces. So you see that there's the outside faces. Now I'm not entirely sure, but I think we can use one of the old school restriction tags. So let's try using a, um, where does it even live? Um, yeah, here under rigging restriction, I'm going to say restrict to outside faces. Yeah, there we go. So this is now only applying to those outside faces. I think I'm not entirely sure, but I think they are. So now inside of the displacement, it is limited by where it says to push up. It's limited to that restriction tag. And now I'm going to also restrict it to where this spline is. So the spline is going to be based on the radius of the spline. There we go, starting to get somewhere. And now this is inflating based on the normal of the object and is pushing it up. But I feel like the restriction tag isn't working. I'm going to delete this restriction tag. Yeah, I don't see a difference here. Um, but yeah, you are seeing this, the general shape that we want. Now, I, I can think of a couple of fakey ways of doing it, but I want to make it a little bit more real. So how do we limit it to those polygons? Maybe restriction tags don't like, I think it's maybe just points based. So is there an inside points outside of vertices? Yeah. Let's restrict to outside vertices. That well, seems a little better. Still a little funky though. Inside. Edge vertices. That's the, oh wait, we don't want to limit to edge vertices. We want to limit it. We want, we want outside faces converted to points. I think. Wait, that seems to do the inside ones as well. Maybe thickness means inside and outside are the same. Hmm, interesting. Maybe that's why it looks so funky is we're, we're manipulating inside and the outside. Um, I think, I mean, the lame way... I mean, this would work. This is something I was trying to avoid, but if we just select, let's see, oh, now, we're, now we have to manually select again because it's not distinguish, It's not distinguishing, we gave it thickness in the beginning. It's not distinguishing between the thickness. Um, so once again, I don't want to spend all the time doing those selections. So if we just go back to here and say, don't give it any thickness, then now they're just a thin, a thin shell and we'll make that editable, put into a connect, don't weld, make it editable. 
hide the original. Man, we keep going back to that one. Glad we saved it. Now, yeah, now there's it's easier on the selections, but none of that even matters because there is no thickness. So we can just grab this and we'll get rid of the restriction tag entirely. And now this is purely based on the vertex map. Or I'm sorry, it's purely based on the fall off from the edges we had pulled. And now you can see we're getting a pretty nice little fall off there. And uh, we could add variations on the uh, fall off is something we have a lot of control over. So let's increase the radius there. And then inside the remapping, we can give this some nice curve so they can really, maybe it's like this upper one. Yeah, there we go. So now you can see we get this nice arcing curve going into it. And that's getting applied everywhere, full power. But we could add variation to that. Well, first of all, you could you know use some sort of uh, the original fracture. Object. Actually, now that I think about it, we probably didn't even have to make this editable. If you don't have to make it editable, everything's always better. So let's go back to the original object. And yeah, that's fine. So here's that object. And if we just put into a group, we can steal the displacer and then get rid of that. Yeah, there we go. So now we didn't even have to make it editable, which is always better. And now those are displacing on that. But we still have all of our shapes. So we have the opportunity to grab these and shrink them randomly. We have the opportunity to randomize them. Uh, primarily in rotation, just a little bit, like uh, five degrees, five degrees, five degrees. So now they're all just rotate a little bit, and they're all still within that kind of fall off that we're feeding the uh, the displacement. And if you wanted to push things further, you could do some sort of thing where you alternate every other piece. Or I'm trying to think of a way of restricting the displacer not being uniform on everything. I mean, one way would just be going into the color and going to noise. And now you can see we're also getting this kind of random displacement on it. And if we really scale this up, I'm not sure how much. We'll do 555. Five, five. Actually, it's not bad. Um, that seems pretty uniform. Maybe a little too uniform. Yeah, it looks like uh, actually it's about that range, like 300-esque. So these are pushing out randomly, but we just make sure that they're all pushing out a little bit, no matter what. So don't quite go to black. So we still get some of that shape. And now we probably want to double the effect, jump it up to 22 or something. So now you can see, yeah, now there's more a little more variation in the way that they're individually getting pushed out. And then uh, we, because it was giving us so much trouble, these don't have inherent thickness to themselves. So now we just add the thickness in post. So... The entire this entire null gets put into a cloth surface no subdivisions but yes on the thickness and let's go negative on that so the further you go they're going to start intersecting each other but now you've got uh yeah there you go actually it looks better than i thought it would um turn on some ssao and yeah let's get a ooh, that looks cool um let's get a light in here a little little something shadows shadows please copy paste the light we um yeah so it looks better than i thought it would and they are dynamic and they are curling on the edges um but you know there's a lot of limitations where you know these are passing through each other a little bit i mean potentially you could make them dynamic and like have them move away dynamically that way um, you know, for their initial position. Right now, we're just saying, hey, hey, random factory, do whatever you want. And um, one of these angles is going to be, uh, actually, no, they're all arbitrary. So, because they don't have a normal direction associated with them. So they all just rotate in their own random local space. Um, and then, yeah, the scale, there's a good chance we'd want them uniformly scaled down a little bit more. Currently, we just have the, the built in spacing, but uh, they're each doing their own thing there. And yeah, I'm kind of surprised. It's doing a better job than I thought it would. The curl doesn't look too bad. Hmm. Yeah, that's actually pretty neat. Try, did anybody... Um, are the normals inside out? Um, they shouldn't be. Uh, well, actually the normals probably are inside out because the thickness is backwards. I, we have to go negative on the thickness. So maybe, um, 
Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's just make it editable. And uh, check. Huh. S the front is inverted, but the sides are not. That's, uh, that's not handy. Cloth service? What are you doing? What are you doing to us? Like, why would the front be fine and the rest is not? Especially the order of operations are going in here. How could those invert? I can't think of any way to fix that except to select them all. And yeah, I was wondering why the edges were dark. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a pain. Um, I mean, when uh, sometimes when the cloth surface isn't behaving itself, what I do, if you want to give it some, um, I'm trying to think, well, you'd lose the inside. And if you're talking about going dynamic, but an alternative here would be to do a bevel. So after, after the displacer is happening, we'll do an, a polygon based extrusion and that can now offset extrude by 20. Oh, that looks a little janky. 0 0.01. But it was only negative five, so let's do an extrusion of five. Now that's a little better. Yeah, the extrusion's gonna treat us a little bit better. See, maintaining the colorized fragments, which is interesting. Um, yeah, so that will maybe do a little bit of a better job. Of course, we're pushing out and not in. We could push in with the bevel by doing a negative bevel. So those will bevel inward and then if you made a, a copy of the original one then it'll maintain on the outside i don't know uh, it's a little if i make a duplicate of that then it should be in its original place but it still needs a displacement like that yeah there you go so i've kind of rebuilt it this is a trick we did last week for something it's a way of possibly getting around that limitation if it is indeed working. I can't tell if the normals are correct or not. Um, I don't know. It's something I got to think about. It's kind of neat. I might want to explore that some more. Um, definitely, we ran into some limitations and some things are kind of specific on it because um, because the normals aren't... It doesn't... The Voronoi fracture doesn't base the normals off of uh, the average of the normal. That'd be a great feature to add in there. Um, so yeah, let's see. Um, we're about to hit three hours, so maybe not enough time for, oh, thank you chat. I literally just clicked on the Twitch chat and the entire page refreshed. So I just lost all the chat in Twitch. Um, yes, I know. Where's my Twitch chat? Let me have it. My Twitch chat again. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I guess let's see YouTube. Are we still online, everybody? That was weird. Um, yep, yeah, well, it's coming back in again. Um, let's see. Uh, there's another question coming in. Um, yeah, so it's the first bit of chat. I lost all the chat, so you can see right here. That's all I've got now. Um, but I'll try clicking the link. But like, we're getting we're getting a little long, and the the uh, link is not linking. Why is uh, your link not linking? Uh, copy and paste it into a window. Oh man, I think that worked, but um, Meister logo. What do we got here? Um, so it's from Meister logo by Meister. Um, circles. Are dogs chasing their tails? Oh, crop circles are just dogs chasing their tails. That's adorable. Oh, it's so cute. I didn't realize what was happening. So the dog just rolls around and everything that gets hit is being created. So um, it was made in Houdini. It was rigged and animated in Maya. Um, but yeah, that's super... Oh, that's so cute. That's like the cutest question we've gotten. Wee! Now, obviously, we're not going to animate a dog. Um, but... Um, I don't know if you can change the color of hairs like that and the way they're moving over. Now you could, you can't clone onto, that's a tricky one 
because like is there i don't think there's a we didn't save this let me save it um what is this uh ground cracks i guess we are using displacement but it's a different type of displacement but we'll just do ground cracks uh new file Oh, man. So, I mean, the, the obvious go-to here is going to be hair. But... Hair, you can't control the color of hair over time like that. Like, it doesn't... There's nothing that... I don't think there's anything that hair acknowledges along those lines. And then my next thought is like, okay, but cloners do that kind of stuff amazingly. But you can't clone onto a spline in a way that would be visually correct for what that is. I guess the next question goes to if you threw into a fracture and that's starting to get real messy, but let's, uh, let's do the, let's do the low poly version and see what it is. And we're going to, we're not gonna spend too much time here cause we're already at three hours. Um, so add hair, adding hair to a plane. Cool. We got some hair. In fact, There'll be no hairs. So I'm just going to say hairs. The hairs tab, we have to say the hairs are as guides. So now literally there's only as many of those as there are guides. And then because we've done that, we can go into... Oh, I didn't even think about it, but we uh, we have all the nice new hair features in the uh, viewport, but we're not going to be using it that way. So um, what I want to do is generate... Um, let's keep it super low. So I'm going to generate squares as the hairs and now in our hair material if we change I'm gonna double click i just like the interface better it's like this um thickness we can say that they're super thick like that and you get all your segments we probably want to even go lower poly on that i th think well uh, that you change by changing your segments here so we don't need quite so many and then uh, I think if we go to generate, we can turn on caps. Yeah, start cap, end cap, end cap, please. There we go. Caps on there. Uh, fong tag, we can turn on the uh, limiting on the fong. So that can be a 45 degree angle on the fong tag. Cool. So all of that's happening. You're generating the hairs. Now, the question comes into, can we... Uh, I even want to let the uh, dynamic sims run a little bit. Do something like that. Let's create a little bit of simulate. Per, mm, simulate forces turbulence, just to give it uh, that little bit of uh, directional randomness. And let's give it 15 and give it a scale. More of a scale. This is going to make them behave a little bit more uniformly. Yeah, so they can kind of be wafting in the wind. Uh, nice. And then... Uh, if we go easy on the forces, I'm going to go easy on the gravity. So they're going to aim up more. So they're, they're more inclined to be kind of wavy upward. I'm going to go even more. We also do uh, grab the dynamics and uh, subdivide them less. So there, now they don't bend that much. <laughs> okay, so we got our super low poly version of this. Let's save it. Color the hairs. Ah, so here's here's the big question mark. All that work so that we can create a fracture object and throw the hair into the fracture. And then what that would hopefully do is explode the segments. And then each of those becomes their own clone that we can now manipulate via other things. So the other things become... Let's just make a plane effector. And it's going to be controlled via the field color, which means we can create a spherical field. And color remap will be a gradient. It's not encouraging so far. Uh, let's make the fracture default to black. 
No. Plane remapping. Spherical fall off. Ooh, they're all they're being applied uniformly. It's just applying to uh, the default one. That is not helpful. Fracture object. No, it's treating it. It's treating all these as a single clone, and they're all their axis is all at zero zero zero. Um, hmm. Okay, that's sort of a dead end. I'm trying to think of because I want I want to keep these more like dynamic y like this because there might be alternatives that we can do. I mean, I mean, could you do? That'd be crazy, but like a <laughs> a series of um um and a couple people in the chat are saying another method I want to try, which was uh. Well, something I was thinking was using a, a vertex color map. So to uh, Xlist and uh, uh, Ligna, that's uh, something I was thinking. Um, I don't have high hopes for it, but let's do the very basic version of it, which is going to be, I guess there's no reason to keep this file. I'll save it just so people can deconstruct it if they want, but I'm going to make a new plane and I'm going to make it copy of it and generate more hair add hair and this time we will mm, no i want the hairs to be as guides again so we have very direct control over them but we'll be using these directly so in the hair material can we drive the texture with a vertex map that is the question now i don't know if it if it wants white or black, so I'm going to do a middle gray, in which that means either way we'd see something. And if we're stylistically matching it a little bit more, let's make this pretty thick again. So these should render and they should all be gray. Um, we change a bunch of settings. I kind of wish I had just continued from... I'm going to copy this material, close the scene file, go back to this one, paste the material, override the current material by holding down Alt and no fracture yes turbulence as guides generate hairs don't make geometry okay now we're back so hit render there we go so same thing but now we can get them to waft in the wind all right so make a copy of the vertex map and we shall feed it a other which is a vertex color and well heck we can just paint on here and see if they translate over or give it some color and a little bit of this all right and um let's see if the hair will accept it so uh hair i guess it would be in the material get the interface again uh color channel so from root and there's tips and texture, a couple different places we can try, but I'll try here first. So vertex map, vertex maps can accept vertex color maps. So we'll drag that in and render. No. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, no to start. So we'll clear that one. We'll go to the roots. We'll try it here. I should have copied it. Vertex map, put it in there, render, nope. Final place, copy that, clear it, surface. Oh, no, surface, I mean, I guess, maybe. Um, they take the color from the surface, and if we color the surface with this, then... Maybe. Ah, oh, dang. Uh, I'm going to make this editable and apply the vertex map directly to the one they're cloned onto just for one final chance. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Did it work in the last second there? It's like I was literally about to give up. So it has to be on the object, the literal object that the hair is on. And there you go. So we don't actually need to see that one. But we need... Oh! Wait, what? Wait. I'm confused now. If I hide that 
They won't take the color. Okay, I'm going to put it into a group. Maybe it goes on instance rules. Hide that then. Nope. What? It's only going to show them with color if it's literally visible? Like, that makes no sense to me. All right, th but let's not get too excited yet because there's a couple extra steps that we need to check. First of all, does it work with animation? Does it work if it changes? So let's turn on fields and um, it's a pretty straightforward setup. Let's, well, let's go all the way with this um, because there's a little bit of potential. Let's go up to a little bit bigger here. Subdivide it some, well, not that much. Um, 25 by 25, yeah. And we'll make that editable. We will regrow our hairs onto that object. So we have to say, uh, I want a count of unlimited numbers, and then boom, it regrows. And now that gets a vertex map. That gets the color applied. Now this becomes dynamic simulation collider body. This becomes dynamic simulation rigid body. And then we have to trap it. Easy enough. Big cube. Invisible. Editable. And we don't have to make it editable. Uh, collider body. And this one will be a static mesh. So now that should fall. It should be being affected by the turbulence. So those that should be able to bounce around. Turbulence is relatively weak. Um, I wonder if we make the sphere less heavy if it would be affected more and just kind of a curiosity thing uh custom density 0.1 no not a variable well worth finding out uh, okay vertex map it's using this now what i want to do is create a spherical field and it will become a child of the sphere and it goes where the sphere goes and now i should roll around make it a little bigger and once again reset psr so now you can see it's actually hitting the ground a little bit. Then in the vertex, in this vertex color, I want to turn on a decay with a nice long tail. So now as that rolls around, I should leave it behind. I said it. Oh, I, I, back, I've done these backwards several times. Decay, please. I mean, I think it's working, but man, the... Uh, this turbulence is just letting me down. So we're going to make a second turbulence and the hair where are the forces forces exclude, exclude the second one, please. So we've got a more powerful one doing the same motion to be on the sphere. There we go. I think I just cranked up the power. Why does it still seem relatively weak? More. There we go. Okay. It was working just, it's incredibly subtle. Okay, so now we get this nice little trail following, bouncing around. Okay, so render. Well, they seem to be taking on the color. Now, mm, spherical field. Let's get a brighter color. Nice and bright. Render. All right. Cool. Um, the basics. Let's make the basic ones have a little bit of color. So we'll just create a solid. And set that to normal and kind of a purpley color. And then the spherical fields on top of it and it should just normal. Yeah, it should be, should be one color until that overrides it. So let's make this darker. Okay, cool. Render. Okay. So we see all of those. Now I don't want to see the floor. I just want to see the hairs. So then the next test to see if we can stop that from happening is can I just make another plane and then E for move, scoot it up a little bit and just scale it up. Okay, did we successfully trick it by just moving another plane above it? Honestly, a little hard to tell. Yes, okay. 
<laughs> so there is a way to trick it and get rid of it, but that overriding, I don't know, it's really throwing me off. It's really weird. Um, okay. So, I mean, I, I don't mind saying it, but we needed to know if there was a, a workaround. So we're leaving our nice trail behind. Um, Color map. Let's go brighter. And we'll leave a longer tail, 98%. We got plenty of frames, so this should leave a nice long trail going around. It hops in the air occasionally from the heavy turbulence. 99%, please. Okay, cool. Um, in the hair, it is taking on the color of the surface. Um, it's the color. It's oh, the illumination and shadows. Maybe I don't want the illumination. Maybe that was part of the problem. Not the illumination, so that should be more illuminated. And under illumination, we should be able to, you know, you can control the... Uh... Oh, I also wonder if my color here is affecting it. So let's put that to white. Hmm. Let's put it to black or well, orange. And then we can see if it's having an effect. No, it's not having an effect. So that doesn't do anything. This is just taking on the color. Blend is normal. We also do average, all these. That'd be, these would affect that one, but now it should just be completely taking the color from it. Um, I'll see the illumination already feels like it's going full power there. So you can say like no shadow, don't receive shadow, don't self shadow, don't back shadow. Um, and yeah, it's just the full diffuse. And if you go above a hundred, no, you can't, I wish you could, but essentially they should be behaving as if they're luminant right now. Um, now what else do we need? I mean, not much. I mean, I guess, I guess that kind of does it. I mean, um, the only the only kind of trick here being the um do, 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 the only trick being that uh I can't think of any way of keeping them lying down. They they're not gonna I don't think there's any settings inside of dynamics that are No, that's not necessarily true. Um, one thing we can do is, you know, make this hair reactive. So we can go to hair tags and make this a hair collider. So those, this should actually push those hairs away. I don't think, I don't think that should. Yeah. So you, now you can see that this is actually making those react. So, you know, that's fine. That's fun. Um, so then it turns into, let's say we want those to keep on lying down. If we're really trying to mimic the effect. And I don't really think there's much, I mean, there's no, I don't think there's a way of these remembering that type of thing. I mean, there's a lot of stiffness threshold uh, forces. Like there's a bunch of different things we can apply here, but as far as keeping those individual parts down directly, I don't think there's a way, but you could uh, possibly fake it. I, mean, I think we want to calm these down. So we do want some drag. Um, 15. Better. Yeah, calming those down helps. Um, so a, a goofy thought I have is if we wanted those to stay down, oh, this is probably a bad idea, but if we trace our sphere, MoGraph Tracer, and I don't want to trace the vertices. So now we should just get one line going at the center point and moving around. So that's everywhere. It's kind of actively pushing against everything. I'm going to turn gravity up so it doesn't jump in the air. There's other ways to stop it, but that's a quick way. Five times heavier gravity. Um, okay, so you get this trail going. And now the goofy thing I'm thinking is what if we create a sweep? With an end side. Just slightly smaller than the sphere. A couple of extra segments. And we don't need this many. So I'm going to have it sample every two frames. So now it should be doing something like that. Uh, I guess we might get some weird curves there. We might be able to get around it doing that. Well, we could do less steps. But I'm going to tell it to be... Uh, B spline. Yeah, that might not clean it up, but if we give it some intermediate stuff, but then there's more polygons. Uniform zero. 
one. Let's get, oh, that gets weird. I mean, it sort of cleans it up the corner. Yeah, the more I move, make it, the cleaner it goes, but it'll subdivide more. We kind of ignore the twisting here. And the more subdivided it is, like, hmm, maybe you can make it adaptive. Oh, that calms it down. Adaptive at 15. Oh, well, that's not bad. I mean, there's still a lot of subdivisions. Still make it skip more steps. So you do something like that. And then can that be a hair collider? I don't know. It, it just might not work. So let's copy hair collider on there. Save it before I hit play. Hit play. And now hide that. And does that... Oh, look at that. It's actually working. That's keeping the hairs pushed down, I think. I'm going to shrink it a little bit. Yeah, look at that. I didn't think it would work, but it does seem to be. Um... So yeah, as this goes through, we can keep them knocked, kind of knocked down because that's going to keep on blocking the path. We could change the shape a little bit too to make it be really square, but that's working well. And then I think you could even go a little bit further. Uh, these colors, I, I should have made these higher contrast. Apologies for how semi-difficult that might be to see. So let's go, well, let's not make it obnoxious. Um, so then there's a neat trick you can do. I learned this from Mike the monkey. Um, it's best with signal, but let's not use a plugin. I'm going to record the tracer and let's, uh, I'm going to go to key interpolation, say linear and let's keyframe the Y and I guess we have to go forever. Uh, this is going to be tough. It'd be a lot better with Signal. Um, I'm going to fast forward and um, what we're going to do is have it constantly moving up into the air slowly. So I think something like that would probably be fine. And keyframe it again on Y. And let's see if I can, if we can visibly see what's happening. What should happen is that the tail, yeah, you see the tail's constantly drifting upward. Now, if you're using Signal, we could control this as a variable speed. But what this means is that's going to move upward and the tail is going to be forced to be down, but then slowly is moving away. So it could go back. So you could actually have it slowly fade out. You also have the tracer have a limited lifetime. That's an alternative would be, let's kill that keyframe and even reset PSR. And then the tracer could be limited. And I'm guaranteed to get this backwards. Let's have it live for 33 frames. Hey, did I do it right? I might have got it right. Nope. <laughs> From end. Um, so you can leave that trail. So now we can have it. Live for 33. Do, 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 do. So it's going to do this. And then it should raise itself out in a very blatant way. So then it's going to be standing upright until it's just like ding, 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 ding. Like just right snapping itself back up again. Um, I guess there's even in-betweens there. As long as you're limiting the length, then potentially you could scale it down as well. So we could go to... You could not do this very well. It wouldn't be very controllable if you were... If it wasn't scaling down or if, if we didn't limit it because it'd be getting longer and longer where right now it's not getting longer and longer. So we could do kind of a shape like this. So it does. Yeah, I know that those are a problem. Um, but now now it will shrink slowly over time. So it, it's going to be less of a blatant just pop in and they'll slowly fade out. So you hide that and they, they do get the slowly more slowly fade out a couple different options for being able to move those away. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of options kind of all over the place with that. Um, I, I, I actually, now that that sort of works, I can think of a dozen different ways that you could potentially do that. Like the same material that's passing through, you could have that vertex map be transferred to something that's getting displaced down. It could be, that would be great because then it would be doing, um, they would straighten up at the same rate that this fades away. So it'd be great to drive that via, um, via fields. I think it would definitely be a good addition. And I cannot just get colors I'm liking. Just not, doesn't seem that vibrant. We 
mapping. 200%. There we go. We have some power. Thank you. Um, render. Wait. Um, why aren't we... Can we be viewing the final hairs? Um, how do you turn on hairs? We are in 20... Yeah, we're in the right version. Let me save this and let's see if we can see these hairs in real time. That's supposed to be something we can do, right? Um, does anybody know how you see the hairs in real time? Um, high quality noise, post effects, layer color, normals, vertex, x-ray. None of those seem to be relevant. Maybe post effects, new. No. Uh, the generate tab. What do you mean generate tab? Does it have to be in the hair? Or you're answering someone else's question. Maybe you're answering someone else. Um, it was in the actual hair settings? Oh, it could be. Maybe in the editor. Maybe in the editor. Editor. Preview. Oh yeah, we need to see the hair lines. Enhanced viewport shading. Generate. Oh well, some maybe you meant editor generate. I'm not sure. As render, flat. I love D. Um, ooh, there's something there, but they're not the proper thickness. And these are pretty thick. Um, I'm going to select. I'm going to lock it so I can deselect it. And we're kind of seeing the final um, detail. That should be the number of them as render flat. No, as render level detail, all count segments. That's neat, but where's the thickness? Maybe it, maybe it just doesn't generate thickness. Ooh, hair polygons has given us pretty good. But will that give us the color? Nah, it doesn't seem to give us a color. I might just have some bad. That's interesting though. Hair polygon seems to give us the best feedback. Wee. But it's not it's not doing the colors. Um but if we render yeah, the colors are there in the colors. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I, I, it didn't, the, like the first three ways we thought it might work, it didn't. And I was like, well, it's not going to work. And it's like, wait, the last one, it suddenly worked, which was cool. I like when that happens. Um, yeah, this one's pretty neat. I got to say, there's something pretty cool about that. Um, yeah, great questions, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, I didn't... Yeah, uh, there's a lot of additional things. We go further on it, play around more, but that's working very well. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for coming and hanging out. Um, I'm glad we just spent a little bit of time figuring out the uh, S22 settings to get something showing up in the viewport, even if it's not showing the correct texture. Um, so yeah, thank you, Trey. Another quick shout out. If you're new, you can go to the Rocket Lasso Slack and join the community. All the same people who have been asking questions will be helping each other out over there. Uh, RocketLassoSlack.com for that. Uh, if you like this kind of content, you want to see more tutorials and you want to support these live streams or if anything I've ever done was really helpful to you on a project or a job or something, then uh, if you want to help out on Patreon, it's super appreciated and you get all the scene files and bonus streams and all that. And there'll be extra extra things coming in the future. Uh, like Well, like little things, like we have that car that somebody generously was adding to it. But then we'll also have like the material I'm making, all the robots I'm making will go, will get posted to Patreon as well. Uh, it's all fun, but thank you so much, everybody. Um, yeah. Um, anything else? Nope, that should cover it. Thanks so much, everybody. And I'll see you on the Slack and I'll see you in the bonus stream tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody. Toodaloo. Bye-bye.